Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Seven o'clock. I call everybody into order for this county commissioners meeting for June twenty-first. Guys and gals, I have the honor of doing the prayer tonight, and I think that is extremely important every night, every day, but particularly today, because we have a budget coming up. We have the planning department coming up. We have our capital plan coming up. Some extremely important things. Maybe the, if not the most important meeting of the year, certainly one of the most important. So I'll ask that we all bow our heads and pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we ask for direction, guidance, unity, and that everyone be together for the betterment of Alamance County. You know, Heavenly Father, we're not asking that solely for these five commissioners, but we're asking that for every single resident of Alamance County, that we pray together, we look for the best for Alamance County as we possibly can as an entire gathered unit, all praying together. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have uh, signed up three speakers on the agenda items, and uh, Christy Drury, is she here? We'll check the, uh, we'll check the overflow. No, no. There's no one there. All right. Uh, Henry Vines, you're next. Uh, we've not seen you here, have we? <laughs> <laughs> we hardly ever shows up. <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, my name is Henry Vines, and I live at 3450 Isley Drive in Snow Camp. My wife, Donna, and I have lived there for the past 40 years, and we both are lifetime residents here in Alamance County. I come here before you tonight to plea with you not to adopt the proposed manager's budget that is over $185 million. This is a 10.2% increase over last year's budget. The largest one time increase that I have ever seen in our county. This is not a very conservative budget. My wife and I both have voted for four of you sitting commissioners uh, right now. We believed in you and the campaign promises that you made. Three of those promises were to work on less government, less spending, and reduce property tax. We would like to ask you to honor those promises tonight. Over the past 10 years, we the taxpayers have seen our property tax rates grow by 14 cent for $100 and no reductions. Now commissioners, for the first time in 10 years, you have the best opportunity to cut the property tax rate. Why? Because of six and a half million dollars possibility of savings this year. 
we the taxpayers would like to ask to please split this in the way of a two cent property tax reduction. This would cost about $3 million. Put the other $3.5 million in our fund balance. The county fund funds uh, accounts are running over with money. We have $26 million in the fund balance. We have $25 million in capital improvement. We have $32 million in COVID relief funds. We have $100 million in relief fund for ABS. S. There is no way the county services can be hurt by giving this tax cut. In closing, do the right thing. Live up to your conservative campaign promises you made to all of us voters. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ed Rock. And Sammy Mosler. Good evening, Commissioners. I am Sammy Moser. I grew up here in Alamance County a few years ago. I hope I don't have to tell you how many. <laughs> but I will confess that my hearing is fading a little bit and uh, my eyesight is fading a little bit, but I'll try to do the best I can. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you folks for what y'all do. Two years ago, I think Alamance County experienced the largest tax increase, property tax increase in our history which ran us up to 67 cents per $100 valuation. A lot has happened since then. Unfortunately, the coronavirus was, I guess, the worst thing that happened. Many people lost their family members. Many people who got over the virus are still having setbacks from the virus. That was a terrible event. Some good things have happened, though, in the last two years. We know that the interest rate has lowered some, saving us money on the debt that we owe for the $189 million bond issue, so that's a good thing. I understand that sales tax revenue is increasing. I understand that we have growth in our property tax base. The other hand, we've got families that have struggled the last two years. We've got small businesses that have struggled. Alamance County Commissioners, I'm asking you to work with our county manager and his fine staff, and let's see if we couldn't cut this property tax rate by four cents. We raised it eight cents two years ago, bringing in $12 million each year. If we could find means to cut it by four cents, we would still be bringing in, according to my calculations, correct me if I'm wrong, but we could still bring in $6 million each year above what we had in revenue two years ago. Another thing that we don't hear much discussion about, we hear the 67 cents tax rate, but all of your citizens out in the county who are in a fire district also have the fire tax. Some districts 10%, some 11, some up to 14 cents per $100 valuation. That runs the tax rate up, not 67 cents, but to 81 cents per $100 valuation. If you live in Burlington, like several of you do, and you add the Burlington tax rate 59.78 cents to the 67 cents, then you're looking at a dollar and 26 cents per hundred dollar value tax rate. I never liked this statement. Years for years we've heard tax and spend Democrats. I never liked that. I wonder are we going to hear tax and spend Republicans? I hope we don't, because I don't like that either. I just ask you to do what Chairman Paisley said in our prayer, think about all of our citizens when you set the tax rate. Let's work for all of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any commissioner responses at this point? All right. Do we have a motion for the approval of the agenda? 
So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. We have the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Thank you. We are now going into, uh, we need to go into a um, public hearing for the <coughs> UDO. Do we have a motion to go into that public hearing? Motion to go into the Unified Development Organization hearing. Thank you. Second. Hearing. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. All right, we are now in the public hearing. And Tanya, is she on? Is she here? Oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank good you. evening, commissioners. How are y'all? Uh, you are. You? I am good. I will be brief with you all tonight. You have the ordinance and y'all have the. Um, information it's online and we went through planning board to get approval as well and what we're looking at now is taking care of just the approval part in the public hearing for the UDO what I will tell you is this UDO as a whole has been approved by planning board with one exception on page 61 uh, to, this is part of the heavy industrial development ordinance under operation setback there is a sentence at the very end, uh, vegetative screening and fencing are allowed, allowed the by right and other design elements may be located within the operation setback when required as a condition of other local, state, or federal permits or regulations. That sentence was actually removed by planning board upon their approval. The approval was to take that sentence out. That sentence was added by staff, including legal, uh, on purpose to the UDO to kind of cover some things that we needed to take care of in the heavy industrial development ordinance. With no other exceptions, the board did approve this ordinance. Is that 3.2.2? <clears throat> well, is it it's 6.5.3 D. All right, thank you. Any board members have any questions? Do we have a motion? I have a oh, question. Oh, I'm sorry. We're hearing. still we're still in the yeah, public. public <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Does anyone on this side of the room have a question regarding this UDO? Anyone on this side of the room have any questions? Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Okay. Over. Over. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. A motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Now I'm asking, <clears throat> do we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, may I ask a question? Yes, before we, before we move on that, Ms. Cattle, can you? Did you say that the planning board chose to strike uh, a provision that the plan that staff and legal counsel wanted in the ordinance? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Can you read that again? So as part of the operation setback, vegetative screening and fencing are allowed was already in there. The by right and then other design elements may be located within the operation setback when required as a condition 
of other local, state, or federal permits or regulations. A little background, Steve knows his background, but the oh, hydro yeah. was rewritten and then touched up between 19 and 20. So we knew that we were birthing a new <coughs> ordinance. So upon this right. ability to do the UDO, we did, this was added in to kind of make sure that we touched up everything that we knew came about after we wrote the ordinance but before we got to this. And so that language is the change to the existing HIDA? Yes. Um, legal, being from legal, doesn't see this as a change. It's just an addition of clarity of language. Why did the planning board want to remove it? So we have a little bit of discussion at the planning board to say there was one member that was concerned about the language that didn't want to add it. He sat on the original committee and didn't think that this was necessary to add. There wasn't a whole lot of clarity on why, but when you read this whole thing, it says all industries regulated by this section shall be required to designate and maintain a minimum operation setback. Operation setbacks shall be measured from the edge of the designated area of operations to the property line of the tract on which the area of operations is located. No area of operation or internal roadways may be located within operation setback. Vegetative screening and fencing are allowed. It also doesn't discriminate on what else might be allowed. It doesn't specifically say. So that's why legal added this in staff to make sure that we're more clear on what is allowed. And just as a to kind of bring you up to date what we had happen was this is items that were put in the, in the uh, that were inserted at the state level um, drain field and collection points what are, they, what are those things called um, the stormwater basins yeah drain basins uh, were inserted by the state which is mandatory we've got to put it there or they have to put them there but it wasn't it, will, it was a, not included in our ordinance to allow it to be there. I think that language ought to stay in there, to be honest. Is that, that's it was what there for clarity, and it's helpful for us to present to people applying to us as well. Right. It also provides notice on what vegetative exactly. means. And, it, and, and if somebody looking at it and wondering whether it's, per, it's permissible to put something in there that's ordered by the state, clearly it indicates that it can be. Mm -hmm. Or should be. I would also be. recommend we leave it in, not right. just delete it. That's staff's recommendation as well. Uh, so I'll make a motion we leave it in if that's necessary. Add it to it and approve the uh, rest of the. Uh, um, unified, development. Unified, unified development ordinance as it stands. Right. Any other discussion? Do we, we have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Carter pointed out that uh, I did not ask for a negative, but <laughs> I thought everybody said yes. I can't hear that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just for clarification, are there any negatives? There being none, show it's unanimous, please. Guys, that's that much of our agenda, if that helps any. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Haygood. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I want to take just a moment this evening. I know you've, uh, you've been through budget retreat We've been through um, the manager's recommended budget presentation here this evening to consider adopting the budget for next fiscal year. Uh, we've had several questions about the manager's recommended budget, so I've put together a PowerPoint with some supplemental information that I'll go through very quickly and then just briefly touch on the other piece of tonight's action, which is the capital plan for county government. Uh, and just very brief, but as I go through, if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. But. Um, so the commissioners received the manager's recommended budget at, on May 17th. The total county budget, a little over $222 million. That includes general fund, fire taxes, E911, all of our all of our funds. General fund spending, where most of our attention is spent, this is where most of our action takes place. Uh, the proposed budget is $185,31,806 in general fund spending. So we've had a few questions about 
the recommended budget, so I thought I'd touch on a few of these for your benefit as well as the listening public. The question about uh, when you look on page 48 of the manager's recommended budget, you'll notice that at times county uh, that lists county department requests, and you'll sometimes see that a county department, uh, the recommended budget is recommending a, more funding than the department requested. Uh, the reason that happens is the county departments do not touch on their own salaries, right? So when they present requests to the commissioners and to county management, it, it's operations for the very most part. Very, very few departments put anything in about salary. So county administration, that's usually the manager, uh, budget, and our HR folks, we are the ones working on what COLAs might be and might cost. Will there be merit? Those are added into department um, uh, requests, so you'll oftentimes see the department's request in the recommended budget higher than what they asked for because of we might be implementing a former merit program our merit programs uh, occurs at people's anniversary dates so we usually make our merits whole in the next year for the employees as well as uh, for this year we have colas and a merit program so those will run up the cost from the county departments I also wanted to touch on ABSS fines and forfeitures There's been a number of questions about fines and forfeitures this is the very first year that county government has, has budgeted ABSS's fines and forfeitures uh, for, for, uh, through the county's budget. These are funds, for everyone's just general knowledge, that come to uh, the school system. They're state funds. They come from the Alamance County court system. They have for a number of years flowed through county government, not as part of our budget. They are strictly passed through, come from the courts to us. We send them as we get them to uh, ABSS. These are not new funds for ABSS. They have been budgeting uh, fines and forfeitures for a number of years. The new piece is for the first time the Governmental Accounting Standards Board has uh, instituted a change, number 84, we're required to budget these, so they're now a part of our budget. And this year we included them in the school system's funding since it is money for the schools. But it's, uh, it's important to note we're projecting next year's uh, fines and forfeitures amount to be $800,000, but again, one, these aren't county dollars, two, they're not a new funding source to ABSS. And I tried to list on this slide what the recent fine and forfeiture amounts have been for the past couple of years. So uh, 1920, a little over $600,000. We're looking at $821,000 uh, roughly for this fiscal year of fines and forfeitures, and we're projecting $800,000. So, Let me uh, slow you down just a bit. Now, obviously, LMS Burlington School System receives those funds, but ACC receives zero of those funds, correct? That, that's correct, yes. Sir. I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, and these are not new funds. We're just reporting them differently this year. That's correct, yes. Sir. Thank you. Another point I wanted to touch on has been questions and uh, interest in the county's fund balance. So I know the uh, commissioners are aware of this. Uh, we have different types of fund balance in county government. We have unassigned. We have assigned, committed, restricted. We have state statute fund balance that the state makes us uh, makes us retain to make sure that we stay solvent. Of all these types of fund balance, unassigned fund balance is the one that doesn't have some predetermined uh, purpose. It's our true, clear savings. It's there for uh, emergencies or if the board uh, has specific uses that you determine you want to use it for, it can be used for that. Uh, the other types, assigned, committed, uh, restricted, even state statute, they all have previously determined uses. So per our last audit for fiscal year 1920, uh, all the fund balances that are some way committed or restricted uh, total up to be a little over $32 million. So those, those dollars have purpose. Per the audit, uh, our unassigned fund balance is $24.5 million. So our total fund balance is almost $57 million. And we're projecting for uh, the end of this fiscal year that our unassigned fund balance will go to between 27 and 28 million dollars in unassigned fund balance. If that occurred, we would be at about 15 percent uh, of our general fund expenditures that are in the manu uh, manager's recommended budget. So th those are projections, right? So take, take them for what they are, projections for how we think we will finish up this fiscal year, and if, uh, that's based on manager's recommended also. And also, um just, you know, we know this, but I don't know that the general audience knows. Uh, what is the least percentage that the state of North Carolina would like for us to have, and what do they recommend? 
So 8% is the uh, lowest amount that we're allowed to go to. If we go below 8%, we start receiving letters from the state, from the treasurer's office telling us they, they're concerned, what's going on, do we have a plan to get back up above 8%? That has happened a number of years ago. Uh, the county dipped below 8%. It was concerning. Uh, I think, th I'm happened not in sure. 2014, if I remember correctly. I believe so, yes. Uh, I'm not sure that I could say the state has a uh, specific recommendation for fund balance above 8%. A lot of times counties will look at peer counties and try to say, are we comparable to other counties? Sometimes that's difficult. Uh, it depends on what other uh, general fund functions they may have. Andrew or Susan, I don't know if you have anything to add about uh, fund balance or possible recommendations from the state. The, the only thing that I would say for the board to remember is that 8% is roughly one month of expenditures. And so for every 8% you have, that's one month's um, continuing operating budget. So there's, there's obviously some value in having an assigned fund balance greater than 8% in the event we had a natural disaster that prevented us from being able to uh, collect uh, revenues, mm -hmm. collect taxes. We're still going to pay, still gonna pay salaries, mm -hmm. for, particularly for emergency services, so it's good to have uh, some level of savings. What percentage does the state recommend? Uh, I, I know we have a we have a policy ourselves that I believe is 20% is our target. That's what we're shooting for. I think that's right in line with you know over 8% for the state. And at the time we set that, I think we uh, uh, that was board set. I can't remember now if we looked at peer counties or not. But they don't really have a specific guidance. I think they leave that to the commissioners to determine yourself. So you know if you're happy at 8%, then you know that's where the county stays. In the past, we've said 20 is our goal. Uh, it's difficult to get to, but, uh, you know. That 20% was set, what was it, 14, 15, sometime along in there, wasn't it? It was a uh, number of years ago. I, I, I can't remember the, the I Before think anybody that's on the board right now was on the board, so. I think I think I was on the board in 2014, and if I remember correctly, right. 2014 we did hit 8% or, or maybe even slightly below. Got letters from the state um, and suggesting that we straighten things out. And at that point, if I remember correctly, our goal was 20%. We're at 15% now. And so if we continue to add to that fund balance, we will hopefully, in the fairly near future, reach the 20%, which is our goal. Indeed. <clears throat> so I want to talk a little bit about, I know there's been lots of questions and interest in uh, the increase in proposed spending in the manager's recommended budget versus adopted budget for 2021. All right, so 2021's adopted budget, when the commissioners at the time adopted it, we were in the throes of COVID, right? We were expecting to have significant uh, drop-offs in our sales tax revenue. I think, uh, if I remember correctly, we reduced the general fund budget by several million dollars below the previous year, uh, made some significant cuts, thinking that uh, we just didn't know exactly what was going to happen with the pandemic. So we're coming back now from uh, the adopted budget for 1920 to a manager's recommended budget of a little over $185 million. So I've tried to lay out here, and I'm going to briefly go over this for, for commissioner's benefit as well as the public. How how's that occurred? How's this $17 million in, uh, this is just increase, right? This is just increase over adopted. So I'll make sure that's clear. Um, so of the $17 million increase over the current adopted budget, uh, adopted uh, for 2021, 1.7 of it were, uh, is spending that we brought back this year. You remember throughout the year, I came before the board and made recommendations and sales tax kept coming in strong and said we need to put back some, we have, we have totally cut our equipment uh, budget with a very few exceptions. I think we bought a few small things. I, I mean, a couple of police cars perhaps, uh, and, yes, and one ambulance. Uh, also recommended and the board agreed to bring back the merit pay um, for county employees, we also funded eight new uh, sheriff's office positions during the course of this fiscal year. We returned to farmland preservation dollars and we reinstated some park program money so the parks could bring back their youth athletic programs in particular. All that totaled up to a little over $1.7 million that we brought back during the year if the sales tax was good. So in the recommended budget, we also have a recommendation to increase spending over adopted for this year by one, another $1.7 million. This is not all of this increase, but the, these are the larger pieces. That includes um, restoring what we cut. I believe we cut about half a million dollars from education operations between the college and the school system. So the recommended budget brings that back. Uh, fully funding the county's penny plan, the equipment, the equipment program, fully funding DSS salaries, and unfreezing positions that were froze during COVID. 
I've got, I have categorized these things as restore spending, you know, just, just to try to give them a category for you to, to see where it's coming from. And these were actually added back in during the year, they, they, well, to, the, to, the to the approved budget from last year. So these were not, uh, I think, the, so we did bring back some, uh, uh, some things, the equipment, the merits, the, the uh, farmland preservation. These particular were not, we didn't restore education operations in um, 2021. We didn't restore uh, DSS salaries and we didn't unfreeze the positions that were frozen. So uh, it's a little confusing, I know, but th these, are, these are things that were cut due to COVID primarily and uh, the managers recommended attempts to bring them back. We also have about $3.4 million in new spending that is, I'm calling it restricted because it is specifically for the capital plan, right? So $3.4 million is additional sales tax revenue because we, we are experiencing a boom in sales tax, but by law, we have to put percentages of certain articles of sales tax into uh, school system capital. So it will go into the capital plan, as well as we've been holding very closely to our prop, the property tax increase the commissioners did in 1920, specifically for the capital plan for ABSS and ACC. We have been, as, those, um, as the tax base grows, we've been applying the 5.64 cents, the 1.40 cents, to the new tax base and putting those dollars into um, ADSS and ACC's capital plan. So that three. And what are those percentages? Uh, I think we've projected this year uh, for the tax base to grow approximately three percent. I believe that's correct over uh, the current previous, uh, the current uh, current fiscal year, and the sales tax revenue. Uh, we went with a model that. Uh, trended at 5.66% over two years. It kind of, we kind of, it's my model, ignored COVID and said, what if COVID, what, what if we hadn't tried to accommodate COVID and then had this wild swing back, what might we be able to expect? So we used the 5.66% over two years to get to the, to the current amount of sales tax revenue. But that 3.4 million, in my mind, as manager, is committed dollars, new dollars, yes, but has to be spent uh, the sales tax revenue must be spent. It will come in. It must be spent on uh, school capital. Then we have an additional 4.1 million in new county spending that are not county dollars, right? These are dollars that are the county will spend, but they're not coming from sales tax or property tax. They're uh, a mixture of grants, the fines and forfeiture dollars that are now in the budget at 800,000. We have a loan in our budget now for ACTA. You know, folks will remember ACTA usually comes to us every year. They're, they're trying to get make it till their grant comes in. They usually come and ask, can we get a loan? We have budgeted that, but we budgeted revenue from ACTA to pay for that loan. Uh, we have one of the other uh, revenue sources that were hit hard uh, in the adopted budget was occupancy tax. We thought it was very likely that COVID would hit occupancy tax. So that spending is projected to come back up. It's a part of the 4.1. As well as, as well as Sarah, which has to do with our local emergency planning committee, they're budgeting funds to buy some equipment, and we have increased state and federal dollars. So, let me interject there. Yes, uh, Mr. Carter and I both have served on that active board previously. I have previously. He's on the board now, and the state of North Carolina, both state and federal dollars and grant money, for some unknown reason, come in anywhere from 60 days to 90 days late. To six months to nine months late, and that's why that uh, that dollar amount is there, yes. and why the county helps out in the interim. Well, I know ACT is very appreciative of it. It helps them make payroll, meet their meet their bills for those couple of months until the the state or federal dollars come in. This is the first year we budgeted it this way, but we have offset it with revenue specifically from ACTA, so it's a it's a self funded loan. Uh, we do have five point three million dollars in new county spent. The major the major components of this 5.3 million in new county spending are cost of living increases for both the sheriff's office and um, county government. Also the new dollars that have been allocated in the recommended budget for education operations, that's increased spending on ABSS and ACC. Uh, we had a uh, recommended budget includes, I believe it was 10 new positions, funding for 10 new positions. We had several departments that had some significant increases to their operating budgets mostly because of COVID and to keep the uh, commitments we've made to work at home and other type activities. That would be IT, Sheriff's Office, and the Board of Elections with their upcoming election and some of the ambiguity about the upcoming election. And we have some mandates and commitments that are also a part of that uh, $5.3 million uh, comes to mind. 
is the, uh, I think we had about $120,000 increase in spending for the Burlington Animal Shelter contract. That's, that's one form of that. I, nothing else pops in my head immediately. Uh, but it gives you an idea of that is new county spending. It's a mix of optional, and some of it is mandated. I think uh, another good example of mandated would be the, the required increase for local government employee retirement system that the mm -hmm. state treasurer is making us pay. So the 5.3 is a mix, but it is new county spending. Then we have some uh, new designated fund spending. We budgeted, we budgeted $850,000 in pandemic recovery funding that's left over from CRF from this fiscal year. Some other fluctuations of designated fund spending equate out to that 764. But those are funds that we have gone through our budget and tried to find where are we planning to pay for things that uh, are COVID related. And if uh, we were planning to use these designated funds that came from originally came from CARES Act funding that we still have. We have designated those and budgeted them. So the, the effort here was to try to give the commissioners and the general public an idea of how did, how did the county, how did the recommended budget go from an adopted budget to recommended with a $17 million increase. This is, this is about as clearly as I can lay it out without getting very much into weeds, but I hope that's helpful for commissioners and for the, for the public. And we made several changes though to the budget to the, to the actual budget we're operating under right now during the year. That that, that's that correct. Up. Indeed, uh, I think the, the amended budget at this point is uh, at 188 million, I think. So you know, we've had grant funding come in throughout the course of the fiscal year, whether it's been COVID related or other types of grants, additional state and federal revenues for departments. So th this is not comparing to amended. That, I think that would be very confusing. To, and we, we generally, you know, we've never had a pandemic, so we've never had a reaction to possible pandemic fallout. No, normally we compare adopted to recommended, right? It gives the commissioners and the public a fairly good idea of what's increasing. This year, I, I think, is a little misleading just because uh, we had some significant reductions expecting COVID to have a bigger, a bigger hit to us than it did. But I hope this lays out the, where the new spending is occurring and helps, helps everyone understand that. Where I was trying to go with that is we've had some allusions to the fact that we've increased the budget over last year's budget by 10%. Sure. But over that last year's amended budget, we really haven't. But it's a muddy picture. Yes, the, the amended budget, the budget changes throughout the year. The budget amendments <coughs> come to the commissioners almost every meeting. We have some on this agenda. Uh, and it's uh, most of the time it's some, especially this past year, it's been COVID dollars or some other types of grants uh, for elections or health or whoever. And we've, we've accepted those funds and started spending them. So it will, it will have an impact on, it will grow the amended budget. But we generally don't compare to that because that happens throughout the year. We try to, we try to use adopted as a, uh, a benchmark. Oops, may have talked too long and <laughs> thought out my foot. Can you help me, Bruce? I think there's only one slide left. You'll be happy to know. Right now. There we go. So uh, those are just a few of the, the major questions and, and, and interests that I've heard about manager's recommended budget. The other thing I wanted to touch on is the county's capital plan. You have it. It's, it was in the packet. It's been revised. You have it before you this evening. Uh, we, we talked about it in TRC and our OSC. We talked about it with the commissioners. Um, I wanted to just point out the changes that are in it. Uh, tonight versus the one that you were presented with on May the 17th. Uh, the county has gone in, county government has gone in and prioritized our unfunded capital projects. So if you look on page 36 of the plan, you'll see, you know, we have our uh, CIP of $250,000 a year. We have a five-year CIP plan in the, in the capital plan. We have a lot of needs that are not in our um, facility plan and in our possible debt, right? We have other needs that are not funded uh, those are on page 36 and we've gone through a staff and prioritized those so you can see what we think the highest priority ones are. So if we come into, if we determine that ARPA by some miracle would pay for some of that or we come into other funding el elsewhere or uh, if, if, if something changes in the CIP, maybe uh, uh, you know some of the buildings that we have in CIP we may not keep. If we don't keep and they drop off, you can look on page 36 and see whatever's number one should pop right into the, the, the mix, right? We've also added on page 14, as well as the project pages for ABSS, the bid prices that the, the, the school system has received for their education bond projects. That's as accurate as we know. 
So you can look at page 14 and see lots of details about all the ADSS um, education bond projects as well as now the bids, and those are also on the, um, on the project pages. So as the board considers this plan tonight, I know that's an item on the agenda. We do ask that you adopt it by vote. I want to make sure it's clear you adopting it does not give us permission to run out and start borrowing money or doing anything like that, but it does give staff uh, a, a direction. Right? You, you have looked at the projects. You believe that they are good. You're, you're giving us a blessing to proceed forward in trying to implement them. Uh, any of them that take capital reserve spending or some kind of debt issuance are going to come back to you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. That is not a, a we're running out the door doing all kinds of things that you get this one chance. That's not the case. Um, everything will still come for the, for the Board of Commissioners. I believe that's my last slide. Happy to try to answer any questions about what I presented at this time. If, if, if not, I'm, that's all I have. Any questions? When, when do we ask questions if we have them of certain things? Expenses. Expenses. Mm -hmm. Expenses. Yeah, mean. that's not now, is it? Or is it? Well, you can ask Mr. Haygood any question you like. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have a question about the airport. Okay. And. It's just because I need to know the answer. Um, I had asked some questions about the $259,204 that we give annually to the airport, and I kind of wanted to know what exactly that was for since they are federally funded, correct? Or however it is I say that, all this stuff. And I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful for the airport. I mean, it's amazing. But I sat down with the tax. Um, our tax person today, Jeremy Akins, and he um, answered some questions for me that I needed to know as far as like, we are given this money and I want to know what this money gives us back besides having an airport that vital industries in our county uses. What a super convenience and blessing everybody. And I got the number back that um, we get back 131,576. So I want to know what the 259 and some change, what that is for, because I know we got a hundred thousand dollar sewer line or whatever it is water line that, that yes. people must be so wealthy that hadn't even built us for. I'd be having a heart attack if that was my company. But um, I just need to understand this because I don't understand it, and and I want to know because I've had several people to ask me why does our county give an airport money every year if I would think that money doesn't keep them in business sure. by far. I would hope not. So if somebody can explain to me what that money's for, why they need that money, because I had a good example today it's, that was kind of like um, like Tasty Bakery. They're a small little business, best cupcakes around, and they have a product they sell, and they pay taxes. But it's kind of like if that airport doesn't pay taxes, Tasty Bakery is working hard to pay taxes to pay them. So can somebody help me, probably the most least experienced of this right here, genius sitting to my right, is my tutor. And, um, and I would appreciate it if you could explain this to me where Pam Thompson can understand it, not Bill Lashley, because he got this 10 years ago. I need to, you help me understand why we give the airport, and I'm not picking on them by no means sure. at all. Sure. Um, what does this do? Help me understand this. So I think we're, uh, you know, it is a recurring line, and our budget has been for a number of years. Uh, remember correctly, I think the county and the city of Burlington both uh, provide funds to the airport. Uh, this year, it appears that, uh, as I look, they're, they're not receiving any recommended increase from the, uh, the current fiscal year for next fiscal year. And I would, I would suggest, I know we have the director of the airport here this evening. It might be best to, <coughs> to let uh, Dan Danieley come up to the podium, if that's acceptable to commissioners, and kind of speak to you about uh, the importance of the county funding, what does it mean for the airport, and, um, and maybe also to speak to the questions about the inventory at the airport, the, the airplanes, and, and how they're taxed, and, and what all that means. I know I saw Dan here earlier, so there he is. If that's acceptable to the commissioners, let uh, Mr. Danley 
say a few words? Mr. Daly, thank you. You are not in the hot seat. Oh, I just good. need to, I need a yes, 101 do. airplane. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, so let's start out with the, who's the airport authority? We probably don't understand. The airport authority is a governmental entity. So as you heard earlier about Gatsby and everything, we follow the same guidelines. We, we are in a, 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 a governmental entity having to follow the Gatsby guidelines, uh, dealing with uh, everyone that these people deal with in a separate or different way. So the airport authority is a governmental entity. Think of it as an extension of, and we are an extension of NCDOT, an extension of the highway system. So we're building highways for aircraft. So thinking up is sort of like a mall, or there's a shopping mall with many businesses, and we might be the mall owner providing that. So it kind of gives you a feel of it, but we are a governmental entity. So at the airport, there are numerous businesses for profit. And so they're selling fuels. We don't sell fuel. We're the governmental entity. We are you guys on a much smaller basis. We are what you are. Okay. So. When it comes to capital projects, we lease out properties for people to sell fuels. Uh, we lease out properties for hangar or rentals, you know, keeping airplanes, those kinds of things. But the operations, the runways, uh, the landing equipment, the taxiways, the lighting systems, all of those things, uh, that is taken care of through capital grants that are provided to us from the Federal Aviation Administration and North Carolina Department of Transportation slash Division of Aviation. And just about every one of those grants requires a 10% local matching share. That's where your money comes for, to do. Uh, we, through our through our operations funds, of, uh, we get a uh, fuel flowage tax. So each person out there who's in the fuel sales business, uh, we get a tax from them, a fuel, fuel surcharge, 10 cents per gallon. Uh, we get that, uh, leasing out space to keep airplanes that takes care of the operations. That pays the light bill, pays the salaries of myself and my assistant, the two employees at Airport Authority. That takes care of that. When it comes to capital projects, uh, I just, in uh, our annual audit that was, was just got to your folks just recently, I uh, was just sitting there just a second ago taking my calculator. And in the annual audit, you will see local matching shares required for the current projects going on. Uh, total is nine hundred three thousand one hundred thirty-six dollars local matching shares. So that's how many million dollars worth of projects we have going on now with the runway uh, rehabilitation, runway studies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's where the money goes to. So you don't sell anything to make any money to pay for your business. No, we're we're not a business. We are what you are right here at a much smaller scale. We don't have planes, so we are not no, smaller. No, we don't have planes. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't even have a go-kart. I am not much smaller. We are a governmental entity. We're, we're not, we're not a business. We're not for business. We're not for profit. We're a governmental entity. We lease properties out. Think of it as a Holly Hill shopping mall. And think of it as if the county commissioners were to have owned Holly Hill Mall and you lease spaces to Sears and Pennies, et cetera. That's sort of the setup at the, at the airport. So if you lease all these things, do you not get to keep that money? We do. That covers the operations. That pays the light bills. That pays the, our salaries. That pays for those type of things. That pays for general maintenance. But it doesn't pay for capital projects. Capital projects are mega millions. And, and we, we, there's no way. So. Since the city and county jumped in several years ago and started helping us with this, we've been able to do things that we can never do before. So how big are you going to get? Aren't you kind of landlocked, so to speak, unless people start selling their homes like no, we Okay. Not at all. We, own, we currently own from uh, Anthony Road to Hatchery Road. So as, as big as we can get, we, we, we have over the last few years acquired uh, several tracts of land to put together a new development area just over 60 acres of property. So we are almost full with what we consider the, the, the older campus of the airport. It is almost full of, of hangars and businesses. Do you have as many airplanes now as you used to that are renting little villages to put their big airplanes in them? You need to come see the airport. Well, I've asked twice to have a tour, <laughs> well, and I've yet to be called. I will give you one tomorrow morning. <laughs> I have don't tell just for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just true, understand. True, just understand where I'm coming from because yeah. you get all these 
you get all this yes, from the federal government. Yes, and then the county government gives you this money yes, for your grant matches for the federal government. That's correct. And I have a hard time understanding that because a lot of places don't get that. Working for two nonprofits, we fundraise our butts off to get the match, or yes, the match comes in volunteer hours with lots of letters of support. I mean, it's not a different ball game, but at the same sense, um, this isn't this. This isn't a private airport for just certain businesses no. in the county, is it? No. But I can't call up Delta and get my flight to the Bahamas and land over there in Burlington and take off from there, right? I have to go to Raleigh or Greensboro. That's correct. So it really kind of is a private no. airport. No. Like, there's some big jets they fly over my house all the time. They do. And, um, so, so the airport, again, you need to think of the airport as Interstate 40. Okay. And so you may say, well, who's driving down 40 today? Well, Who's flying through your airport today? Well, I don't know that either. What do you mean you don't know? During the course of today, okay, I arrived at my office about 8.30ish. Okay, I go in and I sit down and start working on my normal projects. There's constantly corporate jets that land. Someone gets off and goes to do a business meeting and come back and go away. We have approximately 200 flights per day. The majority of those flights are just transient people coming into our community to conduct a quick business meeting and leave. That is your commerce. That is providing commerce to the growth of the community. Now, I, I can't tell you every person. Some of the people I know, you know, things like Sheets and LabCorp and different ones I know the regulars, it's a constant. There were four jets in this morning, in and out, while I was on the phone on a phone meeting. I have no idea who they were. Well, I mean, please know that I'm your mm -hmm. fan. I'm, I'm sure. a big fan of it, but uh, any time of situation of money that little person here doesn't understand how it makes sense because there's a big difference between 259 and 131 and I understand that that's how it's kind of like incentives and we all know how I feel about incentives after once now we have a new jet this uh, seems kind of like an incentive it does I can understand that but it's every year yes ma'am and, and uh, if, you, if you reduce it uh, then we just have to cut back on our projects but you wouldn't close would you in time, we would, yes, ma'am. You built all that out there with all those airplanes mm -hmm. and all this development, mm -hmm. and 259 would close you eventually? 259 is the matching share yeah. of a large million dollar rehabilitation project on the runway. Okay. So, when we get to a point where the runway, and we're doing that right now, we're doing an uh, engineering of design for a runway rehabilitation. And so, when it comes time to actually rehab the runway, if we can get the, the federal money to do that, but if I can't get the 10% matching share, we don't need to do it. Don't get the rest of it then. Right. And then, over time, we have to close the runway because it will no longer be safe. Stones, may I ask a question? How many businesses are stationed at the airport currently? Businesses stationed there? Oh, half a dozen. All right. Yeah. And just give me some example of some of these businesses. Okay, uh, so you have Tried Aviation and h, &H Propellers, uh, that's 40 employees, if that matters. Um, you have Elon Aviation, which is a flight school, uh, 10 airplanes and uh, 11 or 12 instructors, full-time instructors. Uh, Sky South Aviation, uh, they have the FBO selling fuel and also charter uh, jet, and they're employing uh, half a dozen. Um, North Carolina Civil Air Patrol employs only two people there. Uh, Lab Corps uh, count last week was 31 employees in their flight department that advertised for more positions, up to 35 employees. Uh, moving around uh, UNC helicopter, the, the medical mm -hmm. emergency things, I don't know how many employees they have in there, they got several. Um, uh, Missionary Air Group has a, what do we see, a half a dozen guys in there? At least. Um, yeah. I could just go on and on and on with this. How about a propeller shop and things of that sort? Yes, the propeller. Uh, so there are. How about a helicopter repair station? Helicopter repair station, right. yeah. There. Any just, balloonists have their stuff over there? No, ma'am. <laughs> I would <laughs> encourage. I would encourage you, Pam, to take a tour. I did. I got an opportunity to do that with Dan recently myself, and it's really informative. But I will say too, the thing to remember: all these, there are a lot of planes and big planes, jets that are stored there. If they're, if they're I don't know the term, parked there, we get property tax on those 
aircraft. Mm -hmm. And that can be some pretty big bucks when you start talking about some of those jets and some of those other airplanes. That's Talk about LabCorp and how many more planes they're bringing in and right. what they just brought in. Well, um, oh, I don't know if they want to advertise, but, but they do have, <laughs> they have, they have um, nine aircraft right now. Well, like these figures right here, like between the airplanes, real, real property and business, personal property, taxable is $44 million three. Then exempt is $24 million seven. Then taxable means $19 million and we get $131,576. But the exempt, that's the runway and the buildings and so forth that yeah. are on the property. That's, that's property. That's why they're tax exempt. Yeah, we just seem to be helping the federal government. But you, no, yeah. you're helping yourself. See, let's, let's go back to the airport contributes uh, a large amount of money to you all each year. Where's that uh, is this other than the 131,000? No, you remember the report I shared with you a few few months ago, Mr. Mr. Mosier, what did I do that funding a while ago? Well, this past year you had you had that was taxable, right? 19 million 638 thousand um, dollars, roughly, um, and brought in a total of what 131,000. That's what I just said. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. For that. Uh, point being. If we didn't have I-40, Mr. Stanley, as you just pointed out, we'd lose a lot of business. A lot of people would not live here. A lot of people wouldn't buy houses here. We wouldn't have the sales tax income. Um, and a lot of the businesses simply wouldn't be here. Same thing applies for this airport. If we did not have that airport, likely LabCorp and Sheets and some of these large industries would not have stationed themselves right here in Alamance County. Is that a fact? That's true. So, so the economic output last year was $172 million at $20,000 because of the airport. The airport got almost none of that. The citizens received that. You received that, not the airport, you. Because and when did I receive, where did that come? Did it come in the mail? What did it do? It's, I'm it's, just not no. trying to be stupid. I'm not getting this. Well, it lowers your tax rate. It's just like he talked about. My tax rate wasn't lowered. It was raised. Yeah. <laughs> because it provides jobs. Okay. And the people who are coming here to conduct business each day, such as LabCorp, such as all the people, it's because of the airport that they're able to come here and conduct the business provides the jobs. So it provides you know, the, the, the sales of homes, it provides, it's economic development. Okay. It's the best investment you can make. We'll just have to agree to disagree. <laughs> but I respect what you do big time and I appreciate everything that's landing over there, but I just have questions just because I just have questions. And as a brand new commissioner, you're gonna always want me to ask questions. Yes, because if I don't ask questions, I might not support it just because of an attitude I might get. And, and that's why I need to always ask questions. Yes, ma'am. And I would love to give you a tour of the airport and, and that you see. Okay. So. I will call before I come because I don't do. like to surprise anybody. All right. Thank you. Just for clarity, yes, sir. Uh, I did land my hot air balloon on your property about four weeks ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, so we use it to land. I am glad you're safe, John. <laughs> and, uh, At the same time, mm -hmm. I don't buy fuel from there uh, and I typically don't even use the airport properties and we don't store anything out there. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Ever. <laughs> Should I charge you a landing fee? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> and and, and, and we're sitting here, I would love to show you that. Well I mean it. Please don't think I'm trying to no. be a, a thorn in your side. It's just um, no. I take this real serious and, and I'm very inexperienced and I just don't want to just agree with everybody just so I don't look like I'm the mm -hmm. odd man, woman, chick, whatever out. You're fine. I respect okay. that very much. Right. Anything else? Lord knows. Mr. Daly, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a question for uh, Mr. Hager, if I might, yes, about sir. the capital improvement plan. Please. Um, uh, Mr. Hager, I want to talk about the capital improvement plan, but a little bit of background. I mean, I think there may be some interest in the board. And, Cutting some revenue from uh, from the budget, which would obviously indicate a, uh, or require some adjustments to the expenditures, and I think it's important to think about how to do that smartly. Um, with respect to the capital improvement plan, am I right that that plan pays for capital improvements for ABSS, capital improvements for ACC, and then what you've called the penny plan, which is how would you describe the penny plan? Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, commissioners, the, the the capital plan includes 
uh, as Commissioner Turner said, capital spending for uh, ABSS, that's their debt service, their annual pay go, uh, that's existing debt service as well as the new bond debt that we've taken on. Same thing for community college, it's their uh, existing, bond, uh, existing debt, the new bond debt, their pay go. It also includes the county government's building and facility piece. That was not affected by the um, uh, 7.04 cent tax increase that was done in uh, 1920, but it's a part of the capital plan. So that's our, where we're looking at the courts, we're looking at EMS, an EMS space, those kind of buildings, that's in here, as well as the county has pay go that's 250,000 a year. The, the final piece, and it is not in the capital plan because we pay for it through our operations budget, is the penny plan. I call it the penny plan because in uh, 1920, commissioners raised the property tax cent a total of eight cent, which time I told the commissioners uh, we would commit 0.96 cents, which basically balanced out the 7.04 plus 0.96, eight. We would use that 0.96 cents worth of revenue to consistently buy uh, primarily public safety equipment that we need as well as um, vehicles for departments that's the major purchase and the, the revenue funding for that plan includes the eight cent property tax increase that's correct and, it, and since that increase has been in effect all that eight cents has been going to the capital plan it has it's been split 5.64 cents for ABSS every every year and we put actuals in there at the end of the year we make sure it equals the plan has a dollar amount we've talked about we have this conservative plan that in the plan base only grows by 1%. Right. But we, we put the actual amounts into their plan every year once we know it's going to grow by 3%. They realize that extra revenue. So it's 5.64 cents at, at the moment for ABSS, uh, 1.40 cents for ACC. There was no property tax increase for the county government's facility plan piece, but there was 0.96 cents for county equipment. And Please note that uh, the very first year we used proceeds to issue debt. I think we did a four-year installment loan yeah. for some large projects. I think we did the air truck perhaps, is that right? Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember all the items that we bought. So we have debt service coming out of our penny plan as well as recurring money every year to buy, buy equipment. And there's also sales tax revenues that by statute go to the CIP plan for ABSS's capital. Yes, that is correct. Are those the only funding sources? So uh, for ABSS, they have uh, the property taxes for CIP. Uh, yes, for they have for their for ABSS is right. CIP. They have property tax. They have sales tax. They also the um, board of education. What CIP is to the audience. It is uh, that's the capital improvement plan. Correct. That's the acronym for capital improvement plan. Um, the the school system also in 1920 voted the board of education voted to commit their uh, lottery funds in the amount of $1,459,000 annually to go into the plan. At the time they did that, uh, it was a joint agreement between the Board of the Commissioners and the Board of Education, and that was an effort to try to keep the property tax impact low. The schools did not have to do that. They control uh, where they spend it, and the manner it's spent it has to come to the commissioners for approval, but the Board of Ed at the time said we're, we would agree to. So every year we plan for 1.459. In there, in just ABSS's plan. Okay, and the and the plan was we, we planned to issue bond debt at four percent, the four percent interest rate, right? I think it was four and a half percent was the was the uh, planned interest rate at the time. And yes. the actual interest rate that we're paying on those bonds is one and one point four three something or other. I think one, that's four, correct. Three. Yes. Okay, um, and the the plan is also based on a one percent year over year increase in property tax valuations. Is that right? That's correct. What's the and right now I guess we're looking at what a three percent property tax increase year over year. I believe that's correct, and I believe that's been our trend two to three percent uh, over the past two or three years. And also we're projecting sales tax is going to go up. Indeed. So the portion of the ABSS is portion that, of sales tax that would go into the CIP also would go up. That's correct. The the. The ABSS's portion of the plan calls for $6.7 million every year in restricted sales tax dollars. These are these are sales tax dollars that must be spent on ABSS capital. Uh, but even as I said earlier, even with the projection currently for sales tax, it's next year will be more. In fact, we'll see more this year. It will go into capital reserve for ABSS. I think next year you were planning on what, $3.4 million an increase in CIP just on sales tax? Uh, that was not all sales tax. That that, that number, the $3.4 million included sales tax, uh, projected sales tax increase for the school system as well as the projected property tax revenue increase okay. based on the base growth. I don't remember the uh, estimated uh, sales tax revenue that would go into the plan. I want to say $2.5 million. Is that, I'm, I'm, 
reaching at that. So, yeah, and but it is it, it does include increased sales tax revenue. Okay, and how much how much sales tax increase are you looking to put into the CIP plan this year over and above what you planned? So we have a budget amendment on the commissioner's agenda tonight, I believe, that was in the dollar amount of two was it two and a half million dollars. That it may be a little bit high, but we're trying to set the cap high enough that we wouldn't have to come back. We think it will be up to two and a half million extra. And those build the reserves until they're spent. That's correct. Um, so it's fair to say that because of all of those, because your your output is less on the CIP and your and your inputs are more, that the plan is running richer than we had anticipated. Indeed. Uh, if you what's the value of penny? One million five hundred thirty-three thousand, and I don't remember the last couple of digits. But uh, for for the manager's recommended budget for next fiscal year, it's one five three three. Seventy-one. Mm -hmm. So if we cut, for, for every penny in, in taxes that you cut, you have to realize $1.533 million in cuts to be revenue neutral. That's right. One one five three three five seven one. if the commissioner's cut a penny. If you took roughly half of that, if you took actual half of that, it's about $750,000 hit. If you, if you cut property, if you cut 0.5% of the property tax increase from two years ago, and apply that to the CIP. So you'd be putting essentially $750,000 ish less into the CIP each year. Uh, have you run any numbers on what that reduction would look like? It seems that you're 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 still increasing the monies that go into the plan, but you're if you have if you cut that amount, you are reducing the increase in you're reducing the rate of the increase. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. So uh, have you run those numbers to see what that would look like. We have. Um, so we've looked at uh, what a one half cent property tax rate reduction would do if applied to uh, the ABSS capital plan, the ACC capital plan. We also looked at apportioning the half cent reduction to ABSS and ACC as well as the county's equipment plan, seeing as how in 1920 that the Board of Commissioners raised the property tax rate for those three purposes. So if there was going to be a property tax reduction, it might be reasonable to consider that. And did, when you ran those numbers, did you consider the? Did you do it in the proportions that the tax increase was made? Yes. Okay. So it was uh, the, out of the eight cents, there was a percentage 5.64. That percentage was for ABSS right. 1.4, 0.96. We we took the um, the revenue reduction for the um, which turns out to be 766,786 dollars. That's the dollar amount. That's one half of a cent, one half of the 1533, and applied it to those three plans. Um, uh, proportionally and does the plan remain solvent when you when you use that numbers and the second question is if it does are you still able to fund the projects that have been currently identified so we uh, I'll give you the how it broke down and then we also had Davenport rerun a scenario for us so uh, when we took the one half cent and applied it to ABSS ACC and the county's equipment plan proportionally based on the original eight cent tax increase. ABSS's uh, capital plan went from 5.64 cents of property tax revenue being entered into the plan to 5.29 cents. ACC's capital plan went from receiving 1.40 cents of property tax revenue to 1.31 cents. And the county's capital equipment plan, the penny plan, went from 0.96 cents to 0 0.90 cents. Uh, we looked at, we had Davenport run scenarios for uh, what would what would it look like uh, from the, the original kind of Davenport look and the kind of the telltale piece for us is uh, so for ABSS if that if that was done if they were reduced in property tax revenue the low point of their capital reserve occurs in I believe it's 2027 and that dollar amount the capital reserve for ABSS gets down to 4.9 million dollars now that assumes though a 1% increase in property tax valuations and what's the assumption about sales taxes? Uh, that's that's the that's assuming the sales tax revenue stays the conservative original estimate of 6.7 million dollars annually. That's it also flat it stays flat. Stays flat. Yes. So it, it assumes no increase in sales tax and it assumes a a, a one third reduction in the actual property tax increase. Yes, that's I'm not property tax, the, the property rate realization increase. Indeed. At the time the the you know, knowing that this is a uh, a long horizon for this debt, knowing that you're probably going to run into at some point some type of a recession throughout the course of paying off this debt and, and paying for these projects, 
uh, it seemed wise to try to be conservative with those uh, figures, which I think has worked worked well. Uh, so basically, if that were to occur, the school system's capital reserve per the plan, the conservative estimates in the plan, would get down to $4.9 million. The, the um, community college, uh, the community college's reserve would hit its low point in 2028 and would uh, bottom out at $981,173. Again, for the plan, uh, again, they don't, they are not going to receive sales tax revenue, so their difference might be made in um, uh, the property tax base growth. Are you, um, have you run the numbers at one cent, like so a 1.533 reduction in in the capital plan? Uh, we have, and I, I will say also, we, we I mentioned the penny plan. We looked at what this would do to the, the county's capital equipment plan also. So uh, I know in the manager's recommended budget, there's quite a list of vehicles and things that we would be able to buy if it were funded at its current 0.96 cents. If it went to 0 0.90 cents, the county's a capital equipment plan. If the, if the if taxes were cut a half cent, it was applied the way we're talking about. The county would be able to purchase 12 sheriff vehicles, one new ambulance, one remount ambulance, uh, the county would be able to purchase one vehicle for revaluation and the field equipment for revaluation, and then uh, inspections would receive two vehicles. But, so there would be a number of, I think, parks, DSS, and environmental health would lose vehicles. Do you have any concerns if we were to reduce the, uh, the uh, apportionment to the capital plan by a full cent? Uh, if you reduce, no, I'll, I'll go over the, because we ran that scenario also, uh, one cent property tax rate reduction apportioned out the same way we've just discussed. The school system goes from 5.64 cents to 4.94 cents in property tax revenue. The college goes from 1.40 cents to 1.22 cents. The county's equipment plan goes from 0.96 to 0.84. Uh, ABSS with a one cent, if the, if the one cent were applied proportionally to their capital plan, their, uh, their low in capital reserve gets down to uh, $1,213,951. And I, I believe that is uh, 2029. So, I mean, that, that is a rather low amount. Now, I do know that that is still using the conservative uh, property tax base growth as well as the flat sales tax, right? But that, that's, that's, a, that's a rather low amount. How much is that again? One million two hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred fifty-one dollars. Then, uh, if for the college, if if the one cent, if a one cent property tax rate reduction were to be applied proportionally, the college gets down in year twenty thirty to twenty-nine thousand seven hundred thirty-six dollars. Yes, that would be that would be concerning. Um, again, they're not. Uh, That's not even the Zaya Bushes. They're you know not, what I'm saying? That's not again, the, you know, that, that is still a conserv obviously a conservative estimate of property tax base growth, but they're not going to receive the um, sales tax revenue that the, um, that the school system would receive. And the, and the county, county government uh, goes from 0.96 to 0.84 for equipment. Uh, the county equipment plan would include, uh, if that happened, what I would suggest it would include is 12 new sheriff vehicles, one new ambulance, and one remount ambulance, and that would be, that would be all. What about if we take it out of operation, the whole <coughs> one cent? So if the uh, if the if the county commissioners were to reduce the property tax rate by one penny, creating the need to reduce uh, spending by one million five hundred thirty-three thousand five hundred seventy-one dollars, uh, and wanted to apply that to general fund operations, that's where it would need to be applied for. That's where your property tax uh, revenue is going. Uh, you'd have to. You know, you'd have to think about your priorities, of course. Uh, and, you know, if you looked at including um, uh, education operations in that, uh, because we are trying to stay with this 28.2% uh, growth, you know, we've, we've made an effort over the past couple of years to, to when we see new, re new unrestricted revenue, unrestricted sales tax, property taxes unrestricted, to use uh, the 28%, the 2% based on the percentage of the county's general fund budget that ABSS and ACC were a couple of years ago. It's still pretty close to 20 and 2. Um, if, so if you reduce the property tax rate, you're reducing new revenue, right? One option would be uh, reductions in the revenue allocated for the school system by $429,400. Uh, ACC's uh, uh, new revenue reduction would go down by $30,672. Uh, 
obviously these are all optional. I'm putting them out there for your consideration. Um, uh, you would also, you could look at uh, other reductions, and I'm happy to discuss those if you'd like, some possible ones. But Please that, continue. So uh, one of the efforts that we made this year was to re, uh, fully fund DSS's lapse hour. We've been reducing DSS's lapse hour for at least the past two, three years. Um, I, would, I would suggest if the commissioners were going to make this move to reduce property tax revenue, that the DSS lap salary would need to be reduced again, um, $463,484. I would suggest that uh, the commissioners consider the reduction in the number of new positions that would be, uh, that have been included in the manager's recommended budget. Uh, at this point, I think we'd be looking at the four SROs being funded as well as the position for the clerk's office. Now that's four out of eight. It would still uh, leave four SROs. That, so four SROs were the total number that were requested in the budget. So they would, I think it's three SROs and one sergeant. Uh, that would save uh, $215,853. That would reduce the, the spending. I would suggest the board would consider uh, the frozen positions that were frozen as part of the um, adopted budget could remain frozen with the exception of uh, the uh, part-time position with the library that's slated to be the bookmobile driver. Bookmobile is, I think, finally going to actually arrive and come in. <laughs> COVID delayed it significantly, but uh, we, we would, uh, I would believe the library would benefit from having the part-time bookmobile driver back. That's assuming the chips come in. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. If the chips come in, well, there's been, there's been a lot of, a lot of uh, delays with that vehicle, but no, that's $279,505. Then I would suggest the commissioners consider the reduction of the allocation in the recommended budget for crossroads and family abuse services. Reason being, these funds could be paid for with ARPA. We feel pretty confident. These are both increases, right? So these are increases in their budget. Uh, crossroads is a new funding. The uh, $39,000 is an increase above the traditional funding that uh, Family Abuse Services has gotten. So in actuality, those two positions would not be terminated, or, or funding would not be terminated. It would be replaced with ARCA money. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. And you're absolutely positive that is legal to do that. I think There's no doubt. So if you remove that, we won't come up in a month and go, oops, I'm sorry, we can't do that. No, I think we've, we've reviewed that uh, per the criteria that we have right now. Okay. The only thing to possibly change is if something crazy happens between now and July 16th. July 16th is the, our understanding when they adopt, they make the interim guidance final. I think that would be, it would have to be don't, dramatic. Just don't, okay. because we're dealing with <laughs> if crazy. Yes. Yes. So uh, I think all those items added together, those are possible ways if the board is interested in uh, reducing the property tax rate to find the necessary 1.533571. Board is obviously not limited to those options, but uh, you know there, there are possibilities. And then there are uh, additional options uh, the board could consider if um, you know uh, if needed. So. Can I just ask a question? Okay, we got all these high sales tax. It's just a dream come true, rainbows and everything. What if when nobody else is getting their stimulus checks and they're not home collecting money, because I got those too, what, what happens once that starts that um, our sales just go down? Maybe for a little while to kind of bounce back out. What happens to all that money out of the sales tax that's going to the school? And, and just part B, why does ABSS get all of that sales tax and ACC doesn't and the county government doesn't? Why isn't that kind of proportioned out? What, what's the deal with that? So there are, there are certain articles uh, in the state's legislation, certain uh, articles in general statute that require uh, percentages of um, it's the way the sales tax is collected at the, at the sale. There are certain percentages that are required by state law that have so to go to state law. It is. Okay. Uh, and, you know, we benefit from uh, the unrestricted articles yeah. and we share a little we have been attempting to share a little of the unrestricted revenue from sales tax with the school system and with the college also uh, and you know commissioners you'll recall that uh, for I think the, the current sales tax revenue estimate that's in the budget is, a, is of our four models it was the most conservative as far as dollar amount please understand that this is kind of we've departed from our trend analysis right that we have been able to tr traditionally do um, and feel really good about. I mean, we're, it is trend analysis. It's 5.66 percent versus linear regression versus projected actuals for this year versus ligament municipality model. 
it's just it is possible that sales tax could tail off uh, throughout the course of the year. That would that would serve a big concern. That could happen any time during a regular year too. If you know, I think uh, if uh, we had a, another housing market problem or some other international type of you know that, that sales tax revenue is more volatile. Well, I mean, this has been an influx of money that many people would have never had. And I know I've said this at Walmart; they had giant screen TVs out. I mean, they were just marketing to this money particular and not everybody may make a good choice there may not be a later there may you know I mean we're all human that's just our natural way that we think sometimes and um, I th this just really makes me nervous having these projections because that means it's just wrote in pencil it's not wrote sure. in pen and and I just hope it can only stay that good but um, just like the housing market I've never seen anything like that too that can't last forever that's impossible I mean I think we none of this can last forever it's like this high that we're on and we're just getting sucked into it I think that's a that's an excellent point and that's you know we know the sales tax revenue is the one of the most volatile types of revenue that we use so uh, it harkens back to when we put together the um, capital plan for ABSS uh, particularly we we used a flat rate and yeah. tried to be conservative knowing that 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 may fluctuate uh, we can't control it we can't lip raise it or cut it. it it's going to happen as economic conditions happen out in, in, in the real world. So uh, you can expect over a 20 year horizon that there'll be some type of a downturn. And uh, you know, you try to, to build that in as best you can with uh, conservative estimates of, you know, revenue amounts and tax based growth and those kind of things. Well, we had a kind of a paradigm shift over the last, what, 14, 15 months. And part of the reason for the big increase in sales tax has been the increase in online sales. That have that have had a lot of money in people's checking accounts. That's part of that it. That normally wouldn't be there. But if you're buying and you're going to Guilford County or to Orange County or to Raleigh and or Winston Salem or wherever you're shopping, that sales tax stays in their county. But if you're sitting at home ordering it and you've gotten used to ordering things online, and the reason I bring that up, my wife and I were behind. A couple this past weekend she had a cart with a box about this big and she was returning bag after bag after bag after bag of stuff she'd ordered online I guess it didn't fit it, it wasn't the right color she thought it was when she looked at it. I don't know what it was but probably no less than at least a dozen bags she was returning to that store she'd order them online but they came into her and she was returning them there but we got the benefit of those sales through the online sales. And understand and, the small and businesses. And they used to not go into those right. stores. And the stores that we see have cut their exactly. hours. Exactly. Don't do that Amazon thing. I'm not picking on Amazon, just the first thing come out of my mouth. And I'm thinking all we see area businesses that are closing shorter hours because they don't have enough staff. I mean, there is a, there's a, a pattern here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it, we just need to really be cautious about this because I want everybody to have what they need because I don't think they bring up these imaginary numbers. And, and I, I think about all these nonprofits in the county that have took a hit because as long as we've been out for COVID, what they deal with has not stopped, right. but their services have been hurt, which means that escalates what they deal with is even worse now. I will hope we can take some of this ARPA money and really help these agencies that have suffered through this as a gift not part of their budget for the rest of their life because we're just not going to have this in a couple of years to just find room for hopefully so, we can do that in july uh, help our <laughs> county agencies that save literally the lives of our <laughs> county residents i mean there's so many people on this budget just not <clears> one <throat> or two or three we need to really look at the fairness of this across the board well, one of the things good. i did was let me let me ask this should we not at this point go ahead and move into item 8.3 which is the uh, the budget and go ahead and move into that item instead of just discussing prior to budget i i, I think so i think it's time for uh, if the commissioners are interested in doing that to, uh, but I, i'm sure there will be debate and discussion about uh, about where, what the next steps are so i'm happy to answer questions we have all the folks here that have worked on the budget we have uh, department heads are available either in person or by uh, zoom many of them i know we have representation here from 
the college and the school system and lots and lots of other folks. So if there are questions the board has, I'm happy to try to answer them. I'm sure everyone else is too. So, so with the board's like agreement. I'd my comment if I could. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, but should we not go ahead and, and move to the adoption of the fiscal year 21-22 budget and then include that well, with your question? My comment kind of precludes that, but anyway. All right, go ahead and make your comment. Um, we had several discussions during this process about historical budgets. And for the past four years, we have used fund balance as a plug number to balance the budget. It started out, I believe, at about seven million four years ago. It was, yes, around 6.6 .6 million. Yes, sir. And it's gone down to three and a half million last year, and we're using two million dollars this year. Now, for the last four years, we haven't spent a penny out of the fund balance for operational purposes unless we made a decision at the board level to designate funds for some purpose. That's correct. Not to balance the budget. That's correct. I think it's critical that we keep that in perspective. Uh, if I may ask a question, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Haygood, how did you come to the $2 million number? So, uh, you know, originally when I began uh, helping craft budgets for county government, it felt to me like $6.6 .6 million was a little bit too high. Uh, you know, you want to, if you, you're using these funds uh, for general fund activity, so we know we're going to have some funds that don't get spent, and we're, we're usually conservative on our revenues that, uh, that, uh, that we receive. So having, using fund balance to make ends meet uh, in the general fund activity world is a reasonable idea. I think uh, we don't want to spend it that way because it's a sign of, you know, you can't sustain your, you're not able to sustain yourself. If the board's making decisions like, uh, you know, a good example I think I've used before is the animal shelter where the board says we want to designate 2.9 million in unassigned fund balance for the animal shelter. You're spending unassigned fund balance. You're just, you're, you're designating it and then spending, but it's a conscious, mm -hmm. a conscious decision. And I think we had some discussions about how we came to the $2 million mark. I don't know, um, Andrea, if you can, yeah, if you don't mind chipping in on that. You kinda... So when you look at the general fund expenditures, departments can't spend 100% of their budget exactly. There's always going to be something that gets left. There's turnover there. I mean, you can't spend that exact number. And we looked at percentages of the overall budget. And a million dollars is something less than, it's between 1 and 2 percent of the overall budget that we think that would naturally be left on the table. It would natural, naturally be left unspent. On the revenue side, once again, we tend to be conservative. We want to exceed the revenues that we budgeted. And um, typically, if you look at our history, we have always collected at least a million dollars more in revenues than we have budgeted. Um, Sometimes it's a lot more, but at, um, um, at a low level, a million dollars seemed very reasonable. So the a million dollars on the revenue side, a million dollars on the expenditure side is a very conservative use of fund balance. And again, the past four years, you've used that fund balance to balance the budget, but you've not used a penny of that unassigned right. in the past four years. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Not for operations. It has been used for reimbursement resolutions for ABSS and ACC, animal sure. shelter, planned uh, things that the commissioners have said. We, that's a good budget. Idea. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can we agree to, as a board to go ahead to the um, adoption of the fiscal year budget for 21-22? Any opposition? Let's move into that. Now we'll have discussions regarding that 21-22 budget, which I think we've been doing. <laughs> One more question for Mr. Hagan on, on that on that uh, item. Um, we talked about a scenario where there's a 1.533 re dollar reduction in the operational side of the budget, um, which is a one cent decrease, which would equate to a one cent property tax decrease. We talked earlier about the 0.5 cent decrease in capital. If you had a 0.5 cent reduction in capital and then also had a 0.5 cent reduction that was applied to operations, so you would essentially be, you would need to cut in, under that scenario so about $750,000 out of operations. Um, you, you expressed a scenario what, what you might lose 
under a one cent operation reduction. What do you get back if you only reduce it by that operational side by 750? So, um, or what is a scenario where you might recommend that you, you get some? So again, um, commissioners items understand back. this is this is uh, would be my take on what uh, the commissioners could consider uh, for if uh, for a uh, one cent property tax rate reduction. So if the, if the commissioners going to are going to reduce property taxes by one cent and apply half of that to the capital plan, we've talked about what that would look like. Um, the commissioners could consider applying the other half cent to general fund operations. Uh, in that event, again, we're reducing new revenue. Right? So one option would be to reduce education uh, operation spending. At that point, ABSS operation spending, uh, the new revenue available for the um, school system would be reduced by $214,700. ACC operations, uh, the new revenue would be reduced by $15,336. I would suggest that uh, you could reduce the amount uh, that we had cut, or I suggested cutting DSS lap salary in the, in the one penny version. So DSS lap salary would be reduced uh, the, from the manager's recommended budget amount to $331,523. Uh, the board could consider uh, still reducing the number of new positions but because you're only applying a half cent to property tax uh, to the operations, uh, I'd suggest you could consider four SROs, uh, clerk assistant, the GIS position, and the planning position, and uh, CECOM telecommunicator. Uh, one thing to note about the GIS and the planning position, the town of Swepsonville, uh, I've spoken with their town manager, and they have agreed to fund, I believe it was approximately $50,000 of those two positions. So it, we apportioned that out. I think it was 50% of the planning position 25% of the GIS position. So they would be working for the town since we provide those services for the town. But as you, as you recall, they're moving into a zoning model. They need more help from us. They're willing to, to fund $50,000 of those positions. You would still uh, include the reductions for crossroads and family abuse services. But those those combined would get uh, the spending reduced $766,000. $786, which is the other half of the, the penny that would be applied to capital. How often are DSS positions, uh, is, there, is there an issue getting DSS positions filled? Yes. Uh, yeah. Indeed. Why? I think it's a combination of, uh, and I'm sure Adrian could speak to this, I hope I do her justice, uh, I think it's a combination of the pay, the amount of pay, the type of work, uh, the, and the current climate that's difficult to recruit people right now for lots of different industries and, and jobs. Uh, I, we were hearing it's very difficult to get folks to come to work, but this is particularly difficult, difficult work to do, and the pay is low. Uh, my hope had been through the manager's recommended budget, uh, if we are able to continue to do COLAs and merits for county employees, that that would be some level of encouragement for folks to come to DSS, and we, we're starting down a path. So if we can put back their lap salary funding as much as possible, it, it, hopefully it puts them in a position to be able to hire. They're, I will say their folks work very hard and they're working with significantly less staff than they rate, uh, but it's just it's just been difficult for them to hire. Their Medicaid section is really weak and that's just gone out the roof with stuff to have to work with. The, um, the plan you just mentioned would allow some funds to be able to fund uh, DSS if, if there was an influx of people wanting, wanting to do that work. Yes. Um, and then the last question I have for you is if you were to assume that the board um, did not reduce ABSS or ACC at all from your recommended budget. I guess the recommendation is you, you would have to uh, adjust the number of new hire positions based on what you just what you just said. That's correct for the for the half cent model. So if, if in the half cent model where the, the the tax rate was reduced by an entire penny, half cent applied to capital as we've already discussed. The other half cent applied to general fund operations, but not to education operations. So education operations remain funded at the level in the manager's recommended budget. Uh, the um, uh, new position reductions, I would suggest you would want to consider going down to just four SROs. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, wait a minute. SROs. Are you think? Are you cutting SROs? No. no in, in this model, what I, uh, instead of the SROs, the clerk position, GIS planner, and CECOM, that's if you include, I mean, this is, these are my suggestions, commissioners, if you included education operations in the in the cut, in the in the reduction, you would be able to bring, I think, you, I feel like you'd be able to bring those back. 
if you don't include education operations in the half cent reduction, you would only be bring you would only be hiring four new SROs. All the rest of the positions, the clerk position, the um, uh, planner, the GIS, the CECOM telecommunicator, the uh, park technician, the veteran service position, all those would not be funded. Those would all be cut. That this in this model, just from my take, you would only get four SROs. Um, it, you would you would uh, have some uh, positions uh, remain frozen. The model we talked about a minute ago, all pos frozen positions came back. In this model, where you don't include education operations, I would suggest the commissioners could consider that uh, you bring back the three the three full-time positions that were froze due to COVID, the part-time bookmobile, and then instead of all the rest of the part-time positions that are currently frozen for the library, they would get a flat allocation of $16,000. That would have to be divvied out among um, what they use those folks for, which is circulation assistance and program folks. So it would be 16,000 more than they got in this fiscal year, but not the full funding um, that would be needed to bring them all back totally. And lastly on that model, what does that do to the DSS number? In this model, uh, the DSS lap salary actually is less. It's 304,136 instead of the 331,523. And That's I, a cut, 304 cut from your $24,000 cut from the recommended budget. Yes, that is which correct. Which would leave about $250,000. That is correct. There is no way that you can not do the veterans, not do parks and rec, not do, you, you just, these are always over here in the corner and all these others, boom, you know, we always find a way to do it. They are just as important as anything in this room that is asking for money. I, I, there is no way, when I hear about, we preach safety all the time, and we have the nerve to sit here and talk about not finally getting coverage for our schools with SROs. I promise you, violence is still a hot mess. Watch your news and school shootings and everything else is still happening, regardless of this flipping virus. And the, the veterans, let's just put them in the corner, let's move them in the building every time we turn around, and let's not give them what they need. But yet our soldiers can go to war and do everything for what we need, and they come back here, and they are different, because you may go to deployment, you don't come back the same. And they have rights and honors and everything else that this country owes them. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. We may need to take a break. <laughs> I think this would be a good idea. I think I need to take a break. Can we take let's a break? Take a, let's take a 10 minute recess. Sure. Go back in session. Okay, we are on the 21-22 budget. Are there other questions before anybody makes a motion? Questions? Comments? Comments? Questions? Any other discussion prior to making a motion? I have a motion I want to make. Um, but I want to give everybody an opportunity to ask any questions that they might have. Well, I just want to say that I appreciate uh, Commissioner Turner's input. I, I can definitely tell you have done a lot of hard work here. And I want to just tell you personally, I appreciate Thank the you. hard work you Thank did. Thank you, Ms. Weston. Um, this budget is pretty, um, it's taken up a lot of our time, to say the least. Uh, and I think we've approached it in a prudent way. I think we've approached it in such a way in which we can take care of our citizens. We can increase uh, pay for the folks that, um, that, that we decided really needed it, some help. Um, I want to thank the county staff for all your hard work and putting this all together. You know, I've seen this on the sidelines for years, but I never really saw how hard you folks actually work at your job. And I just want to thank you so much for all your hard work. I'm good. Well, it, it's easy sometimes to overlook what's going on in Alamance County. I know we talk about it. Um, I know many of you have heard the number that we're projected to grow. Two by 2035 is 205,000 people. 
That's about 30,000, 30, maybe 32,000 over where we are right now. Uh, if you average that out, it's roughly 2,000 people a year and new people coming into Alamance County and using Alamance County services. When you look at the 2009 report on uh, collection of residential property tax and the services used by residents in Alamance County, residences, residents use around a dollar and 40 cent for every dollar they pay in property tax. So, I mean, obviously we have to be collecting funds from other places. One of those is sales tax revenue and praise the Lord this year has come in really strong. We have looked at, um, we've looked at the last four years at what's happened in the budget. We've come in above. Brian has done a phenomenal job in my mind of, and his team, Andrea, Susan, the rest of the team, in trying to come up with a budget each year and then managing to that budget. I know some of you may not feel that way, but when you look at the dollars, we've used the fund balance as a target number to balance the budget. But in the last four years, they've been able to manage to not spend those fund balance dollars. We really want to give the citizens of Alamance County something back because we are collecting growing revenues every year but at the same time you can't continue to grow services and serve more people with less people I mean as you've heard over the last year and we heard during our budget hearings our people are stressed sheriff's department is stressed DSS is stressed ABSS is stressed Alamance Community College is trying to grow to meet the needs of the community and we're looking at trying to cut money out of a budget for them when we're getting ready to fund bonds which the citizens of Alamance County approved and possibly put them in a position where we've got to come in and pull fund balance dollars out to fund their needs. That doesn't make sense. I know somebody, there are, there are people in here who aren't going to appreciate what I, or aren't going to like what I'm getting ready to say. We've not used our fund balance for the last four years. We're getting ready to contribute, and Mr. Haygood, if you'll confirm for what I'm, what I'm saying, approximately when we get the audit, we think we'll be adding about $3 million back to the fund balance. I guess a, uh, Instead of using $3.5 million this past year, we're going to contribute another $3 million <laughs> to the fund balance, right? Correct. Right. That's the projection. We think. That's projected for about September when we get our audit. So we've spent two hours kicking them around the idea of how to come up with a tax cut and I think everybody at this table would like to see our citizens get some benefit from the revenues that are coming into the county At the same time we've got to take care of all those citizens the manager has proposed a two million dollar contribution from the fund balance to balance the budget that's without a one cent property tax increase. Now, everybody up here, I believe, I think I know everybody up here would like to see us contribute some of this benefit to the county back to the citizens and see where we can take it to. My proposal would be to take a one um, a one million five hundred and thirty three thousand dollar plug from the fund balance balance the budget and give a one cent tax decrease. We've got a balanced budget. We've met the needs of the county. We've met the needs of the departments trying to serve our citizens. I'm not going to say it's easy. I would challenge any person in this room and anybody else in the county to spend the hours that these five people at this dais have spent in the last two months struggling with this budget. That's what I think we ought to do. And I'd like to make that in the form of a motion. I do have a question about your proposal. 
uh, are you looking to take his full 185 number and the penny decrease in taxes? That's what you're thinking. Right. About well, uh, Commissioner Carter, his budget is too high. And its budget's too high based on three pillars of his budget. Last year's number was 168, voted on by you. The revenues this year, if I got this right, is 183 million. That pretty close? That's 15 million dollars more than the budget was set. Beg your pardon? That's 15 million dollars more than when, when the budget was set. 183 is what Andrea has let me know that how much revenues we have brought in. <clears throat> now, the re the number. Now, I just want to get Mr. Haygood. Just a this is an educational thing. It's not really for me. Could you tell me what a revenue neutral budget would be? So. Usually with revenue neutral, I think we are dealing with reval, so we're involved in changing uh, property tax v uh, values of the base. So we, we're required by law to tell the commissioners what uh, revenue neutral is uh, in the course of a reval. So um, if you had to uh, make an estimation about this budget, where would you say revenue neutral would be on this budget? I mean, anyone can answer. Uh, would it be 175? Would it be 176? I'm what not sure. Looking at, you're looking at a revenue number that doesn't change, right? No, I'm looking at a revenue number that comes in every year. Right. What's my revenue number that I got from Andrea, who showed me what the revenues were? So is it, are you able to? I'm looking at three pillars. I'm looking at last year's budget that you voted on, and I'm looking at the revenues that we brought in and the expenditures. Revenue and neutral, though, comes from the revaluation process. Well, I understand that, but I'm trying to get Mr. Haygood to give me an idea where revenue neutral budget would be in this scenario. So the $183 million revenue that has come in thus far has been, um, I think we looked at that earlier today. Is there a way to help demonstrate what's made up that revenue, how it's gone from uh, the adopted budget to 183 I can help you with that. So we've been looking at the concept of revenue neutral related to property tax is the growth. So if you're growing by 3% every year, revenue neutral would be to lower your tax rate so that you offset that 3% growth. And the dollars that come to the county would be the same one year to the next. For sales tax, which has been our biggest growth area, I mean, we're seeing it growing at whatever these percentages are that we report every month. And we we wouldn't consider a revenue neutral number for sales tax, but that's our second largest revenue area. And then the unrestricted intergovernment, the restricted and unrestricted intergovernmental revenues, they can fluctuate vastly year to year. So we don't try to predict what those are because they are restricted to be spent for the programs that they are funded. So what we've seen in the course of, from the adopted to now, is that we've had quite a few grants that came through for the elections process, for COVID pandemic response, especially for the health department. Um, the SS has had some. So we're really not sure from the adopted through all of those amendments, what would be considered something that would be neutral and we would see again. Gotcha. Neutral, neutral and see again. <coughs> I see that uh, makes sense. I'm not sure if that answered your question. It did. It did. That was a good two words to use. Uh, would you, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, I have some numbers that I'd like to share with you. I think that the only, the, the number that I would feel comfortable going to, as far as this budget's concerned, is 181,117,356. Why? Because that's how much my community can make. That's how much they can go out there and contribute to this process. I'm not, well, I do not want to go one dollar over that number. And to be honest with you, that's a million dollars more than I'm willing to go. 180 is my number, okay? I want everybody in this room to know 180 is my number. And I can tell you and explain to you why 180 is a good number. And if you want to get technical here, if you want to go back to the campaign, where's, Ms. where's Mr. Vines? Oh, right there he is. Back in the campaign, I said that county, county government should not grow faster than the rate of inflation. This is one of those examples, Mr. Vines. I think that our I think that our 
a, a budget that would be considered revenue neutral is 176 million 480 thousand. That's my number. You don't have to agree with it. That's my number. Now that being said, if I took what the Federal Reserve told me on Wednesday that the inflation rate for this year, fiscal year, is going to be 3.4 percent, I took 3.4 percent and I multiplied it by my revenue neutral number that I have, and I got 180 million. 347,612. Now that's the number that I think that the county can afford to, to do. And the reason I go that way is because that's what my taxpayers have raised this cycle. And they did it $15 million better than we thought they could. All I'm suggesting is, is we look at this budget more from a, a, from a, a, a standpoint from how you would look at it in your, in your own house or how you would increase uh, Pay, uh, how you would increase your um, your revenues and decrease your expenditures. That's what everyone tries to do, right? All I'm trying to say is, is this budget for our taxpayers, the number I gave you, that would number will fit for them. And that's also a number that we can take care of everything that we have suggested to take care of. There's going to be some cuts. But we have, in the very next item that we get finished with tonight is a $32 million deal from the government. What are we doing? That's just my two cents. I just want to thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to say this, gentlemen and ladies. I do appreciate it because I, uh, I just wanted everyone to know that's where I'm coming from. Um, I know this budget process is extremely difficult, and I think Brian and his staff, I can't thank you enough for all the work that I've seen you folks do and how much time you have spent with me away from your family and away from things that you enjoy doing. And I just want to let you know that I appreciate it, and I want to work with you to solve this problem. I don't want to be an issue for this problem. Thanks. Mr. Thompson, you've not had any, do you like to? Did you yeah, almost said I haven't had anything to say? That's, that's funny. Um, no, I just, you know where I stand about some of these positions. I don't want to see them lost in, in the, all the, if we don't do the little things well, we certainly will not do the big things well. And I just really, take things very personal when it comes to people who work with direct services with people who have really serious issues. We cannot forget those. They're taxpayers also, and they matter. We all matter. And, and Bill's right. We got another whole bucket of money coming next that can really make a lot of differences for a lot of our agencies that really do some frontline works. And I just think we need to be real, real aware of that. I don't think this, we've ever talked about outside agencies as much as they have since I've come, and I mean, and I'm not going to ever stop that because I know the work they do. It's very important. And it's all tied in together, law enforcement, the courts, these agencies, the health department, trust me, I could just scare you all to death with some data. But um, I just think it's very important that we look at the great big picture and, and realize that everybody on this budget is just as important as everybody else <coughs> on this budget. And we're going to differ. I told somebody that, I said, you're going to really see how different we are tonight. And I think that's really good Absolutely. because we are not a clone of each other in no way, shape, or form. And, I, and we cannot all be the same or we'll always do the same thing. And um, so that's it, John. Gentlemen and ladies, lady, I'm going to make a motion. That there we, is a motion on the floor. Oh, yeah, that's well, right. there's no second at that right. point, so okay, it's not on the there floor. There was an opportunity for a second, but if there isn't one, that's fine. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we cut the tax rate by one penny from 67 cents to 66, that one half of that come out of operations, Mr. Haygood, as you have previously suggested, and that the other one half come out of the uh, operating budget, the unassigned operating budget. I think our budget can sustain that. I do not want to take it out of, that's my motion, I don't want to take it out of capital because I'm afraid of what's going to happen in the next two years and possibly the next four years. And that scares me to death that we've got this outstanding 150 million for ABSS and and uh, <coughs> a much smaller amount for ACC, but we've got to pay that no matter what else happens. That we've signed the the dotted line, 
the mortgage, the deed of trust, whatever you want to call it, and we've got to repay that period. I don't want to take it out of capital. I would like to take the half penny out of operations, and I think we can sustain that. And as Mr. Hager, as you've already explained, things like crossroads <coughs> and so forth, Ms. Thompson, you and I have the same concern <coughs> there. I feel like the uh, ARPA money can be used for that, as you've already indicated, um, and I think that would repay those monies. Um, so a half, half a cent. Now, the one exception would be uh, the extra position for the Veterans Association. I would like to see that funded. But accepting that, I'd say a half a penny from operations, a half a penny from uh, the fund balance, and that's my motion. Point of clarification, Mr. Chair. Uh, how would you allocate the reduction in operations? Would it include ABSS, ACC? Would it not? I think Mr. Hagan gave two options. It would. It would be the first option that he included uh, involving ABSS and ACC. Now, you mentioned the veterans. Are you, is the SROs out, the park rec person out, the GIS person out? Is that out? I think my uh, thought would be we look at the sales tax, we look at all the other monies in three months or six months, and we readdress that at that time. Uh, but I want to give the taxpayers some benefit. I mean, they've really come through for us uh, at this point, and I think they deserve at least a penny reduction. Mr. Chairman, I think it might be helpful for Mr. Haga to express again what the scenario was that you're suggesting. I think that might benefit everybody because I think it did include the SROs. It did include the, the SROs. SROs. Right, a half a cent included leaving the SROs in. Correct. And a number of other. That is correct. A number of yeah. other positions. So the uh, uh, scenario I mentioned uh, for the commissioners to consider if they were going to reduce the uh, property tax rate by a penny and apply a half cent to general fund operations. If, if you're going to include the education groups in the operational cuts, that would be ABSS operations, uh, $214,700 uh, revenue reduction. ACC operations, $15,336. DSS lap salary, $331,523 reduction to the manager's recommended budget amount. The new positions uh, would include, th these would be funded, these, these would be funded positions in this model for SROs, the position for the clerk, the GIS position, the planner position, the CECOM telecommunicator, those would be, those would be funded positions. Uh, crossroads and family abuse services uh, would be reduced and not to be funded, uh, considered other funding. Did you say veteran services? And the only thing I would like to amend for that would be add back in the Veterans Administration position. And no parks and rec? at this point. Okay. The people who provided daycare and child care for all of our first responders during COVID. Do I have a second? Okay. No now that's but, not the same as Steve's, right? I'll, I'll second that. Oh, that's not yours, right? That's not mine. But, but I have a question. Yes. If I may, Mr. Uh, Mr. Traga, does the um, with the ABSS reduction by $214,700, do you have a sense of whether the new number approximates the 28% target that the county is, is seeking with ABSS based on the 66 cent property tax rate? So uh, the, the new number in the manager's recommended budget included $460,000 restore and uh, I think it was a million dollars which was very close to the 28% uh, of the new unrestricted revenue at budget retreat. So I think, I know this is a reduction of $214,700 to um, ABSS operations, but this would be, uh, it would be $1,460,000 in increase minus $214,700. So that it would be above the 28% uh, the, the revenue at retreat time, but that was mainly because we were trying to do the restore action too. So, so it's above 28% that we've been targeting. Yes. Um, and I think 
based on Mr. Chairman's motion, you would probably have to adjust the amount of DSS reduction to include the veteran services receptionist. Yes, that that would be my suggestion to balance the budget. Something would need to shift in order because uh, this this reduction of one half cent, the seven six six seven eight six dollars, doesn't include veteran services at this time. If the commissioners approve this motion. I would suggest that we change the DSS lap salary reduction in a way that would accommodate the um, uh, veteran service position. About forty-one thousand dollars. I believe that position's forty-two thousand or forty-two thousand one hundred thirty-nine dollars. It would change the uh, DSS lap salary amount to become three hundred seventy-three thousand six sixty-two. Reduction. That yes. would be a reduction. How much is that again? Three hundred seventy-three thousand six hundred sixty-two dollars. So what will that leave them? Is that the money you're talking about? It's not that amount, right? The the original the original fully funded was five hundred thirty eight thousand, and I can't remember the last. That that was the recommended budget, taking them back to fully funded. So uh, this would be taking three hundred seventy three thousand six hundred sixty two dollars of that five hundred thirty eight. So there would still there would be additional funds in DSS's salary line, not the original manager's recommended budget. By this amount, 373, 662 less. So, so if uh, they have a, a bunch of social workers that CPS workers that are just ready to go to work and they want to live here in Alamance County, and we have a chance to really have our DSS loaded to serve the public instead of certain ones doing two and three jobs at the same time, we won't be able to do that, right? Because we're taking it, correct? I think it would be the capacity to hire is lessened. Uh, you know, the, the the recommended budget was putting it back, trying to take it to 100 percent, but Yes, this would this lessens the capacity to hire to hire at a hundred percent. Yes, but I uh, you'd have about. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Craig. I just serve on that board. Well, you'd, you'd have about two hundred thousand dollars where you could hire you could hire immediately if if you had people who wanted to serve in those roles. That's about two hundred thousand dollars. What's the average salary at DSS? Yes. Uh, I don't know if anyone has a uh, has what a I'm, guess. What I'm wondering is how many positions. Is that? Oh, um, I think so. I remember correctly from this fiscal year when we reduced their budget it was to the equivalent of keeping 11 positions open at all times uh, I, the last numbers I saw they were at one point I saw a report from HR I think they were 40 positions down yeah. I think the one in the agenda packet is part of one of the reports maybe showing them at 30 some positions so uh, you know they, they're they're averaging some terrible turnover and difficulty so if this puts some capacity back I don't, I don't, it wouldn't be 11 positions. Maybe this is a uh, swag. Maybe an eight. Yes, perhaps you could hire eight people immediately, ish, based on the 200,000 that remain. Yes. I bet these low entry people that you're talking about about 35, 30, something like that, 30. are hovering right around there with your detention workers. How about that? And what they both work with is unbelievable, stressful, nightmares, the worst part of a person's life that has just fell apart. So just think about that. With that clarification, Mr. Chairman, I renew my second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Mr. Oh, excuse me. Could I just get, it's been a while and oh, I'm sure. old. Can you just repeat your motion again, please, sir? The motion is Thank that we take a half uh, half a percent from operations, one half a uh, percent, one half a cent, as directed by the county manager, which he just addressed. Um, we add back in the veteran service. We decrease DSS by the number that he's already given to us. Um, so we fund the 1.57 whatever it is million dollar number with a half a cent from operations, a half a cent toward the uh, increased fund balance as directed by the county manager's proposal as just given. <clears throat> One question for Steve. Did you just say that if you did that out of the fund balance, you're going to be getting revenues in over $3 million that you can put that back in the fund balance? Well, we're already getting it. Okay. This year, September. it'll be this and year. we will probably get it next year. We don't know, but we probably will. Okay. And what you just what what you just alluded to, I have to say, y'all know I have an adopted grandson, and you know the yeah. situation he came out of. Now, he's not in Alamance County; he's someplace else. But he came out of a group home, 
That's all. <laughs> the best group home is a horrible situation for a young person, male or female. And uh, I mean, he brought a whole lot of baggage into my daughter's family. I know what Pam's talking about, and I know what these cuts we're talking about to DSS mean to children in our county. Not only to children, but to parents, young adults, Seniors. Uh, single mothers, single fathers. And I really struggle with that, folks. I mean, I really, really do because of our responsibility is to take care of the people in this community. We're dealing with, we're really dealing, I know it sounds trite to say this, but kind of dealing with funny money. Because, John, what you're saying, take a half penny out of the fund balance. I said take a penny out of the fund balance. Let's cut the tax rate for the benefit of the citizens. Let's take care of our citizens. Let's take care of the needs of our people. We've got law enforcement. We're doing the right thing for law enforcement. We need to be doing more. DSS. Those jobs, I struggle with trying to imagine with dealing with the, some of the situations they have to interview these young people that come into the situation. They have to interview them. <clears throat> My daughter's dealing with that up in, up in, in another state right now, trying to take on a group home herself. Um, I, I can't even imagine what she's doing. But we have a chance to try and do something for the citizens, put money back in their some money back in their pockets, perhaps, and try and take care of our employees, and see if the dollars come in like we think they're going to come in. We'll actually be contributing money again to the fund balance next year. If you think about that swing, we budgeted $3.5 million out of the fund balance this year to balance the budget and we haven't spent it. Not only did we not spend $3.5 million, we're putting approximately $3 million back into the fund balance. That was said earlier tonight. That's about a $6.5 million swing. I'd like to see us give more back to our citizens next year. I mean, if the county continues to grow and our, you know, our property taxes, our property value values right now in Alamance County are estimated to grow at 9.6%. Almost 10% growth in property. And, I'll, and you don't have to look far in the county right now to see that growth. Look at your own home. If you don't believe me, pull it up on Zillow if you haven't looked. You'll be shocked if you haven't looked. Um, our tax base is growing. Uh, our population is growing. Look at the new apartments that have gone up across the county. I could roughly account about 340 brand new apartments that I can almost throw a rock from my house and hit. Um, apartments on both sides of the interstate going down, new people flowing into the county. And we're looking at trying to take DSS in a situation where we're compressing people into these apartments and they're going to have to deal with the circumstances that come out of some of them. And we're telling them, we're not going to fund your positions, we're not going to fund your salaries, and we're going to ask you to do the same job. That hurts me. We can, band up, we can balance this budget any way we want to balance this budget. Bill, the 176 number you're using from last year, mm -hmm. that, was the, that was the adopted budget. We made multiple amendments to that budget that were retroactive last year, which brought that number up. Yep. And so to, it's not, it may be a 10% increase over the adopted budget, mm -hmm. but it's not a 10% increase of what we actually spent. Several people made comments to that, alluded to the fact that it was 10%. It was 10% over the adopted budget, not 10% of what we actually spent. Um, I could go on, but I, I don't think there's any need to. I'm sorry. 
quick let point, me, quick point well, of clarification. Let me just answer part of that. If we have an increase of 9% in property values, then we're required by state law to go back to a revenue neutral budget. Well, that's, that's after we do evaluation. Huh? Yeah. After the evaluation. Uh, that's the 9% you're talking about. Then we've got to decrease the tax rate to correspond mm -hmm. to the revenue neutral. Right. So I don't see that as a factor at all. Uh, <coughs> secondly, we have, Mr. Haygood, maybe I misunderstood, 44 unfilled positions in DSS. Was that your number? I think there's a, a report in... Um, I think it was 42 at our last meeting. 40, yeah, okay, 42 uh, unfilled positions. You're still going to fill eight out of your budget with the half percent uh, cut or half a penny cut. Uh, we can't make people go to work for DSS. We physically cannot do that. You know, the vacancies are out there. Nobody's filling them. And so those are positions that we're talking about cutting, but we're not cutting them. Nobody's filling those positions. If we get to August or December or somewhere in the future and we see that our revenues are greater and they have <clears throat> people to fill those positions, then we can do that. I'm not talking about cutting DSS positions. I know that sounds nice, but we that's just not where we are. Yes, sir. Quick point for clarification, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Haygood, I think in the recommendation there were also some some frozen positions that would that would come back, and I'm not sure you mentioned that in the last time you were at the podium. And this uh, this I think, Mr. Chairman, was, would be part of your motion if you if you would adopted what Mr. Haygood said earlier about that plan. Correct. So, that's so, what I understood we were doing. Yeah. So uh, that's correct. Uh, in this in this particular model that we're talking about now. Uh, to, to put the impact of the half cent property tax rate reduction on general fund operations, the things that I've mentioned, uh, all the all the frozen positions would be fully funded and restored. So that would be um, the three full time positions, uh, library, HR, maintenance, and then I believe it's five positions at the library. Those would all be returned also. So the the um, so they are not part of creating the seven hundred sixty-six thousand seven hundred eighty-six dollar uh, spending reduction. They remain. They they would be funded as they are in the manager's recommended budget and would remain funded under what we're currently talking about. And thank you for that clarification. Yes. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I'm making sure. Mr. Lashley, how did you vote? I voted aye. 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 And I voted aye. All right. All opposed? No. No. All right. So we have two no's and three yeses. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We are now looking at the uh, Alabama County Capital Plan. You have that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in front of you. Mr. Haygood. Sorry. Uh, so uh, as, we, as we mentioned, the capital plan is before you. We've had some minor changes since it was presented to you on May 17th. Uh, it's, uh, I want to be sure I'm clear with the commissioners. Adoption of this, we take that as direction. We proceed forward with these projects. Any, any action that's required, if it's debt, if it's spending capital reserve, those type of things will come back to the commissioner. So it's, uh, it includes information and plans for county, school system, and community college. And it, it does, we would ask that there would be a vote to adopt it. And uh, we bring it every year, we'll bring it again next year. So it changes throughout the year. This is a snapshot of it at this current time, but uh, for us, it, uh, the adoption by the board serves as guidance and direction for us. In discussion? I have one question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hager, page 37, the Alamance County Facility Plan Summary. There are three line items there, the Court Services Administration, J.B. Allen Courthouse, and the Civil Court and County Office Renovation. I, I just had a question about the scope of what, of what that entails. I know there have been some, some discussions among the judiciary uh, group to talk about those those improvements. I, I just don't have a sense of what that 
what that number represents. Certainly. So um, if the commissioners want to look on, uh, let me go to the page. Uh, these are some of our larger, larger projects. So if you look on page 42, you can get you can get a glimpse of what we're proposing to do uh, as far as court services administration goes. So that is a uh, $11.7 million project that we would be issuing debt for. Um, we've been working with the court leadership. I know uh, Chair Paisley sits on a court leadership group that meets on a regular basis, talks about a lot of issues, but one of them is this uh, potential new building. It would be on the, uh, the plan would be to add it to the east side of the existing J.B. Allen uh, facility. Uh, it would be constructed to house offices for clerk of court, uh, district attorney, the uh, superior and district court judges. Uh, uh, the hope would be to get every all court office staff out of uh, civil court building as well as J.B. Allen, create this new space. Everyone would move from uh, historic courthouse, they're off the, the judges and the DA's offices and the clerk's offices in J.B. Allen into this new space. It's uh, uh, that there, so their offices would be there. Then the second piece of this that just it dovetails with this new building construction, I believe that is page uh, the next page 43 is renovating JB Allen. So, so right now we have district attorney, court uh, clerks, judges are all in spaces that are the same dimensions as courtrooms, right? So, the plan would be if you build this new building, you move all these employees out of their current space in J.B. Allen primarily into this new space. J.B. Allen will be renovated to put, I believe it was eight courtrooms in J.B. Allen. So, all court could take place in one building. So, uh, we wouldn't need civil court building anymore for court. You wouldn't technically need historic courthouse. Um, but that, uh, so that would be the, the, the goal. And then the last piece, civil court and county office renovation, that would be once all that was complete, court was relocated to one building, J.B. Allen. The county would assume the operations of the civil court. This would become one one building, all county government, and there would be need to be some renovation work done to just uh, design and install offices into some of the court space. And this may be a better question for the chairman, but has this is a similar plan to what you submitted uh, or what you presented a few months ago. Has the has the conversation among the judicial members on the panel changed the plan at all, or is it the same plan that's been? I'm not aware of any change. Okay. Yeah. Is there any discussion for a public defender's office in there as well? That would be a, a situation, I, I believe, Mr. Uh, wouldn't the, can't the state have to change that? I don't think that's something we can. Oh, I know, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not in our future. I think we've, I know that the discussions with the judiciary so far have been about the possibility of adding district court judge, perhaps, if we got a new district court judge. So the planning process that we would go through would try to incorporate growth we know is coming. So if we know or feel certain that a, that a public defender's office might be a part of this complex, it would, if it happened, I would imagine in my mind it would be in the new office <laughs> facility. Um, so, you know, we, we do have a budget we'd want to try to stay in, and I think that's been one of the points of discussion with the judiciary uh, has been you know, we, we want to try to stay in the budget that we can afford, but try to plan for the future of Alamance County and the growth, too. So. The discussion, as I recall, basically gets into, um, you know, we've got to go two stories. Um, we're debating between cost and possibly three or even four stories. We don't want to continue to spread out laterally as much as vertically uh, because of cost and all kinds of things, but we don't want to look at next year. We want to look at, for the first time in Alamance County, in my 47 years of practicing law, we want to look at maybe everything being in one court building, J.B. Allen that's with expansion. Uh, you know, right now, I have a really uh, real advantage, as Mr. Johnson will probably tell you, uh, attorneys coming in from out of town don't have a clue where to go to court. Yeah, because we have three different court buildings currently. Uh, this would consolidate everything into one single building. Uh, we put civil and criminal into one building. We would still have the uh, historic courthouse as an additional facility if needed. Um, you know, right now we're r renting um, the gallery players, what is it called? Paramount. Uh, uh, Paramount, yes, Paramount mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, for courtroom space. Um, yeah, that's COVID, yeah, right? Because of COVID restrictions? Because of COVID and because of space period. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So, you know, right now, we've never, when I moved to Alamance County in 1973, they were having discussions about consolidating courtroom space and building a facility. <laughs> again, in the 80s, we had that discussion again. Here we are in 2021, and finally, we're talking about making the move. Uh, it just needs to happen. Sure says we've grew in one area, and that's crime. That's true. So. Yeah. Well, but a lot of it's civil litigation as well, and all kinds of other things. It's not solely crime. More people, more stuff. Exactly. Got some stuff. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? I'll make a motion that we approve the capital plan as presented. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, again, unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Haygood, thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Evans. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, I have a couple of budget amendments to present to you tonight. The first one is actually our grant project ordinance, which will budget $32.9 million that the county will receive from the American Rescue Plan. This is an initial budget. Um, this is for audit purposes only. Since we have received the first tranche of the revenue in the amount of $16,462,568. So this does not um, specify which project the county would fund. This would just get establish a budget that we would then, once we've had community input and gone through all the phases that we want, then we would bring a plan back to the commissioners for approval and we would then allocate those funds to each um, specific program. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Continue on, please. All right. Um, I'm going to pass out the next budget amendment. Um, the first page was inadvertently left off. All of the information was there in your cover sheet, but the line item details unfortunately did not get uploaded. There you go. Um, so the last budget amendment that I'm presenting this evening um, is kind of our year-end cleanup. Um, this will help align our budget, make sure that we are in compliance with general statute. Um, so for the board to consider tonight um, the following amendments, we would budget an additional 200000 for the school system in regards to their fines and forfeitures. These are passed through revenues, and again, this just meets the GASB 84 regulations. Um, to budget 24000 for a Project Safe Neighborhood Coordinator, which is a contract that is supported through funding by our Sheriff's Department, as well as the City of Burlington Police, City of Graham Police, and the City of um, Mevin Police Departments. We would budget an estimated $2.5 million of restricted uh, sales tax that would be transferred to the school's capital reserve fund. I wanna stress that this is an estimate. Um, it could be less than the 2.5, but by budgeting that 2.5, we're able to stay within the general statute regulations. Um, this would be limited to the actual restricted sales tax. So if only an additional 2 million comes in, we're not transferring any additional beyond that 2 million that's actually received. Um, we would transfer an additional 200000 to our workers' compensation funds for claims that we've had this year. Um, we would transfer $51,693.73 to our emergency telephone system for ineligible expenses as deemed by the E911 board. And to budget $76,908.97 in insurance claim proceeds for our HSC Chiller project. So that would be the impact to our general fund. And for our school's capital project fund, we would um, transfer $451,984.73 to our school's capital project um, reserve fund to close out roofing projects that we've had currently at Broadview Middle, Cummings High, Element, EM Holt Elementary, and Sellers Gun. And then for our workers' compensation, fund, we would budget appropriated fund balance of 300000 for additional claims. Your 
Where does the money come? Where does the money budgeted for lawsuits? The money budgeted for lawsuits. Yeah, we're not sued. What, what item is that called? <laughs> so that runs through our legal department. Through is that their your department, Claude. Okay. Yes. Through their contracted services line. And last year, during fiscal year 20, at the end of the year, the commissioners decided to designate, I believe it was 150000 So during the course of this year, as we have had lawsuits that needed to be paid out or additional attorney fees, then we've been able to pull from those designated funds. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank Unanimous. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're now going to public speakers. Um, I see on the agenda that we have a Martin Nystrom. Yes, he sent a message, Mr. Chairman, that he withdrew his name. All right. He'll come at another time, if need be. And I understand we also have Bob Clayton. Clayton. Bob, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Good evening. I'm Bob Clayton. I reside at 5761 South NCI 87. While I currently serve as a member of the local consumer and family advisory committee and a board member with NAMI LMS Casual Rockingham affiliate of NAMI North Carolina, I speak today with very mixed emotions as an individual expression my opinion based on my years of experience as a family member and advocate. As our committee co commissioners are aware, the Cardinal recently um, announced a consolidation with Via Health on the heels of six counties seeking to disengage as part of the consolidation. The League Cardinal has agreed to cede responsibility for coordinating member services and supports to Via Health on July 1st, 2022. I have respect for Trace Sutton as he has tried unsuccessfully to change the culture and responses. I also recognize that Cardinal has not done what is needed to fill critical gaps in service. I do attend various meetings encountering probably close to 50 individuals monthly through my efforts. What we have learned from assisting them to have needs met and to advocate for themselves is that nothing is different on the ground. Many state representatives have expressed concerns about Cardinal's performance. Cardinal has not been good stewards of our resources and public funds as noted many times in our media. Enough PR campaigns for everything there is a season. Finally, let me say that this is malice toward none, rather it is just about doing what is right for those who have no voice to speak for themselves. I have the greatest respect for Alliance Health, their CEO, Rob Robinson, staff, community, and the community work, so I do believe they are the best choice. I know their director of community and member engagement, Phil, uh, well enough to know where he stands when it comes to their and our members. Alliance has exceeded average state performance levels in many areas, in many more areas than Cardinal has, including the implementation of a, an important mandated initiative for the TBI waiver. This is personally significant to me because of a, a very dear and close family and that Alliance gets it. As far as implementing projects in a responsive manner and that it bases its efforts on a higher regard for individuals being served. It is vital that Alamance County disengage with Cardinal and consider a plan to shift the responsibility of managing local mental health, developmental disabilities, and substance use services to Alliance Health. While this decision is difficult for our county leaders, the results of remaining passive on this would continue to be harmful to our local citizens who must depend on public services. Thank you for this opportunity to come at public, publicly about this issue on behalf of many citizens who remain voiceless to speak on it for themselves. I urge county commissioners and our county manager, Brian Haygood, to proceed with realignment to Alliance Health, allowing our community to transition to system management that our local citizens need and deserve. Make the change to Alliance happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No other speakers, I understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Creighton, I do know that uh, Mr. Turner is on the board studying that right now. Uh, he and I both were in a meeting, and Mr. Haygood, with, um, we have been with several of the providers, uh, and that's being researched very, very carefully and closely. Uh, Cardinal, as you know, is being gobbled up by another provider, 
Um, so they will not be our provider in the future, um, except unless we go with um, the uh, the entity that is uh, bringing them in. Um, so there will be a change, and we appreciate your comments. And, and our concern with them being so far away is successfully uh, managing care coordination from a distance like this. Right. And if I had another choice, it would probably be with this guy's MCO. I mean, his CEO is a rock star. I mean, I can't say enough about this organization, too. We appreciate that. Thank and, um, you. Alliance is close. They're in the, the research triangle area, so their headquarters is right there in Morrisville, which is a lot closer. And I, I know Mr. Turner serves on the county commissioner and advisory board, which consults with the board of directors on appointments and recommendations. Mr. Turner, do you have? Thank you, Mr. Crichton. We are looking at that uh, deeply, and uh, and we need to make the right decision. Thank you. Any other comments, board members? Okay, Mr. Haygood. I have no report. All right. At this point, we need to go into a closed session. Do you there, have any commissioner comments? Uh, if there are any, I just assume since there was no... You relevant. actually asked for that. I'm sorry? You actually asked for that. I heard you. Oh, you said any commissioner comments, yeah. but I mean, yeah, I thought yeah. I had it as well. It's that, then we go to closed session, then we're done, right? Typically, okay. can I, I just have a small yeah. statement? Do you mind if I make it? Sure, you know, that's I'm why I'm be nice. Comment. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna read it so I'll stay focused. Um, I, I just need to make a statement. This has been my first budget, and within it are areas that can make life better, hold people responsible for their choices, educate our children, provide healthy activities and beautiful parks take care of the abused, keep people safe, maintain facilities, provide transportation, care for the elderly, advocate for veterans, and so much more. I, I take this serious just like my fellow board members. When I see all of this money that we're looking at, I, I've never felt pressure like this. It feels as though this COVID money is just falling out of the sky. I've said that before, and it feels as though we are in a frenzy to spend it because we don't know if we'll ever have it again. This money that so many feel will fix everything that we feel needs fixing. But sorry, you do not fix people with money. You fix buildings, roads, sidewalks, plumbing, and so much more. There are millions of dollars coming into the school system, but the school system is not a parent and cannot love a child the way a loving mom and dad can or should. The school system cannot nor should raise children. It was created to educate children, nothing more. But sadly, in many cases, it has been placed in the situation of taking care of children before school and after school. There is even a homeless children's program, McKinney Vento. Amazing people work with this, and I know them, and I know their dedication. Think about that, homeless children. When is the last time that you lived in your car, studied for a test, and knew your only meals came Monday through Friday from your school? while praying all along that none of your friends find out that you're homeless. Millions of dollars do not fix children. A good, solid, safe, loving home is responsible for raising its own children, not a school system. I see the lack of a father and many times a mother in nearly every client that I interview at the Stalker Detention Center. I see the total breakdown of family over years and there are serious consequences of that breakdown. I see a lostness, and I also see a little kid remaining in a grown man or woman that so desperately needed and still needs someone to love and support them through their mistakes. All of this crime, family, is the answer, and we have some really big issues. From birth to 18, there are 6,570 days. That is how long that we have our kids until they become the legal age of adulthood. You know, it seems like forever, but it can be in the blink of an eye. We as parents must get this right. We see the results of that failure every day in the news. I would encourage all of you in here and watching to take the time to go sit in juvenile court and watch devastation walk into that courtroom. Then walk over to J.B. Allen Courthouse and see the results of what changes did not happen in a young person's life that keep making bad decisions. 
We ask, why do kids do what they do? How can this happen? We want our children to grow up and be doctors and lawyers and pastors and teachers, law enforcement, soldiers, but they will be us because of our actions that we have showed them on what to be, good or bad. Parenting is the most important job we will ever, ever be honored with, and society is showing us just how much of that is missing. My pastor and Steve's pastor shared this with his Father's Day message at church yesterday, and I'm going to share it with you because it's really important. Seven minutes a day, the modern day excuse for a parent. Fathers are leaders, guides, friends, and symbols, but they cannot be anything if they are not there. Boys do not learn what it means to be a man from a computer game, but from watching and interacting with their fathers, their uncles, and their grandfathers. Girls learn to admire and trust males by being able to admire, trust, and love their fathers. If you do not believe that, I suggest you go to the Family Justice Center and watch what walks in the door. The average number of minutes a father spends talking to his children is seven minutes per day. You cannot shape and form your children in seven minutes a day. A father has to spend at least an hour each day with his children, not only talking, but just being there. I know being a commissioner is very serious, and with this position comes much responsibility, and our directions are liked by some and others not so much. I don't see everything in black and white when it comes to making decisions. I read between the lines when it comes to people, because everybody has a why. Why they make the choices they do. We have so many amazing programs in this county, in this state, in this country, for so many situations of which I am so thankful for. These situations, along with the help of these agencies and programs, can truly be successful if the family is standing there strong with accountability, support, and love. And for the leaders of this county, we can never be afraid to look at that why. That will require honesty, humility, and being humble. You will never defeat your enemy until you accept that you have one. And pride and the sense of power will be all of our destruction if we ever look the other way with anything. Thank you for giving me nice. a minute. Thank you, ma'am. Very nice. Any other comments? Okay. I now move that we uh, go into closed session of the North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11. Friend A, friend three, in order to preserve the attorney client privilege between the county attorney and the board and receive a report regarding the claims made in the case entitled NAACP et al. versus Graham et al. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. We're in closed session. And we need to close the closed session. Is that correct? That's correct. And we need a motion to us. A motion to end closed second. session. A yeah, motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The answer to that is nope. none. <laughs> okay. Um, the board did receive a report from the county attorney concerning the case mentioned previously and gave instructions and, um, and, and we gave instruction to the county attorney. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And, and we all leave. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 7 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website.
Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.